What's happening, everybody? Happy motherfucking gravy day. It's past the gravy episode 459, and the boys are all back together, reunited, and it feels so good. Bobby Jokes, glad to have you back on the pod. Did you miss us? I know you got a lot of people saying that they missed you. Did you miss us? Of course. How could I not miss a three hour long podcast? When you saw it, when we sent that over, were you like, Thank God. Robert, <laughs> get it right. It was three and a half hours. It was yeah, three my and a half hours. My <laughs> bad. Three Closer and a half. to four. I had nobody else cares that doesn't deal with audio, but I had to compress the audio so we could upload it to one of the <laughs> podcast sites because <laughs> it was too much of a file. That's hilarious. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Robert, I don't know if you we are children when you're not here. But I had randomly decided that day too. I was like, I'm going to go old school on this podcast. And make a beer mid. So I drank eleven beers. I saw that. that. I did see that. Yeah, it was uh, that. I'd say that had a lot to do with it. I thought it was a really fun podcast, but that oh, was definitely one I'm sure time. Robert's like dodged a bullet on that one. <laughs> well, I don't know when I see Robert's face and I feel us keep going long winded. I'm like, all right, let's bring it back. When Robert's not here, I'm like, fuck it. Neither one of us has anything to do. Let's just keep going. And I, I don't I've been re- like, I don't, I don't <laughs> care about dinner. <laughs> I've been really trying to like, um, I, I, I do go back and listen to a lot of the podcasts and I do a lot of the editing, like for like some of the video clips. And so like I hear us a lot and like, I've noticed like, Hey, if you don't drink as much, Alex, you probably, the quality of your takes are better. And last week I did drink like, a, like as much. Cause I got, you gave me the, you were like, well, we're doing old school beer. And I was like, fuck it, let's go. You, you got to do it from time to time. And, you gotta cut loose. Yeah. I got a little sloppy there at the end. Got a, but it was got a little sloppy. It was fun. It was a lot All of fun. The and I've gotten was that everybody enjoyed it. Nobody said like, I'm sure somebody thought like that was just way too long of a podcast, but I was pretty happy that people were like, fuck yes. A four hour podcast. What happened with Robert? He probably hates this. And it was like, Robert <laughs> actually wasn't a part of that one. So that's why I don't know what it is. Robert's just a conductor. He's like a silent conductor. You don't notice him. He's, he's so good at his job that like, it's kind of like, that's just a look from Robert. Time to wrap this up. I'm not making any more points with this. Yeah, I mean, I I respect his time. I don't respect either one of ours. <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> that's great, that's really that's what it comes point. down to for me. That's re- yeah, no, that's perfect. That's a perfect synopsis of it. Um, but let's let's get into the pre cum segment where we talk about <sighs> you know the stuff that that we feel like bringing into like the tree of trust before we get into the the nitty gritty part of the podcast. Nitty gritty is a fun word. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and start saying that more. But um, it's I good have band been, too. I have, um, not to brag, but I've had off this week. Um, didn't go anywhere. Again, not a vacation guy. I know Tessa was going jet setting all around America. Rod was in, in New Orleans at Jazz Fest. And I was at my house hanging out, watching sports. I did a podcast last night, too. Just pretty much the exact same thing. I'm just not waking up. So, one, I feel like my brain is on steroids because I've had accurate like adequate amounts of sleep all week long. So it's just like, this is fucking wild. Like I thought the other day, I was like, dude, I bet I could, maybe I like one in like a 5k. And I was like, no, 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 that's your smart brain telling you chill out. Like we need to, we need to cool it on like future Alex things. Like we're not going to sign up for that because we're not going to have the sleep next week. We're not going to have all the sleep just because I don't work that way. But um, I have been watching a lot of uh, like bar rescue. They're doing mini bar rescue marathons in the morning when I get up. And so like, I'll be putting my bets in just watching John Taffer yell at people. It's very therapeutic. Um, but they keep running this ad for, it's called a, what is it? A, a, fucking video, I wrote down, a QB. It's called a QB. And it's basically just for like old people. It's like a pedal machine. Like it's just like the bottom part of like a bike, but it's just got the pedals and it's for like, stay active while watching TV or reading. And it's like those, like the quality of it, I would compare to those Snuggy commercials from back in the day, where it was like, you can wear it to the soccer game. And it's just like three actors like, yay, go team. Or like, they're just eating mac and cheese in it. But it's like an old lady, like reading a book and she's just so happy, but she's also, she's, she's got her feet pedaling on the thing. And I was like, I kind of want to just get one of those. Only so I can be like, oh, I just got done working out. Like you can always say you were just working out like and not be lying. Like all you gotta do is do a couple of pedals and be like, yeah, uh, wait, what's up? Oh, sorry. I took, took so long to hop on Xbox because I was working out. 
They're like, well, you're doing the fucking pedal thing again. It's not really working out. It's like, no, it is. It's got my heart rate up. Like, do you think anybody could just get jacked on one of those though? Like, could I like train for the tour de France and be like, well, it's all because of QB. I mean, if you're doing it all day and you work at like a desk, you could get good calves. You're not going to Maybe that's jacked. what I need to go for. You're just going to need to go for up. good calves. Dude, get your calves nice and toned and a little bit bigger and then just only wear like those shorter shorts all summer just to show off your calves. I think calf I season, boys. Do Guys, I don't know if you know this. The sexiest part of a man's body to a woman is the calf. So this just, summer, I've always had chicken legs. Guys. So maybe it's wedding well, season. I'm getting close to wedding season. Although other thing I I I meant to bring is like maybe this helps me with this this situation too. I I talked about this a couple of years ago where I was skinny fat and I'm getting back to that point and I'm not feeling great. Like I'm all I've always been a medium shirts guy, and I'm getting to where there's like some medium shirts that fit differently, and it's like this is showing a lot of belly, and I don't like that. Like I'm getting you're getting more gut. And it makes me self-conscious. So I start I, taking the stairs instead, have, of, instead of using your elevator. I do take the stairs because our elevator has been out the whole fucking time. Our oh, elevator yeah. just doesn't work. And they're like, Haha, don't you love living here? Fuck no. I don't love living there. Don't love living there. We're paying $25 a month for golly tracks. I don't fucking use it's bullshit, but I have, there's a, so our leasing office, um, they're like the manager has an office and it kind of faces where like I walk down the stairs when I take the dog out. And my new game is I just try and like hawk a loogie at the window. It's not open. It's just, it's got the blinds closed, but like there's like three or four like loogie marks. And it's like, that's fucking me. Just, I'm you know, so proud of it your does pettiness. Absolutely nothing. It does absolutely nothing, but it's like, and then I got, I got a couple that was uh, two. I goes, you guys, uh, are you guys looking at the apartments? I was like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend renting it. This security gate, this has been open all week. Like at nights, like I, I took the dog out at midnight last night and it was open. It doesn't seem very secure to me. There's been all kinds of break-ins and stuff over here on this street too. And, and then like, you could tell the ladies are like, fuck you. And she was the lady that smugly just poured her coffee and told me there was nothing she could do about the valet trash feed the day before. And I was like, watch this. There's nothing I can do about this except tell people the truth. It's like th these used to have plants in them. See these planters? They used to have all these, these beautiful plants. They tore them up. You know what they did? Raised rent. They raise rent about this much every year. So just get ready to be paying like a billion dollars in, in, a, in a year or two. Like, I hope you're, um, I hope you're really rich. I hope you know Steve Jobs. You don't because he's dead. <laughs> but it had been a minute since I got that. And just, I'm, I'm at full on war now, man. Like, I don't care. I can't wait till I move out and I can tell the gravy gang the name of the apartment complex so they can all leave just the worst reviews. Really looking forward to that. And it's not even a dick thing to do because maybe the reviews will get so bad that they have to drop the rent to the people forced to live there. Maybe. But then they just say it's inflation and this. I'm like, I don't fucking care, dude. I'm getting less and I'm paying more. Tell me how they're, that makes sense. Like it doesn't, they're assholes. It doesn't have to. They're bad they're at slum, it. They're slum lords. I live in I live in a slum, is what I'm saying. All right. Uh, <laughs> but at least you uh, can get the QB pedal and you can get to while you live there. With my calves. I'll have great calves. They'll be like, fuck, that guy is an asshole, but he has amazing calves. Oh, Sir, nice calves. what is it that you're doing? I'm not using the gym that's always closed. I'm definitely not using the gym that's closed at the apartment complex. That's not what I'm doing because I can't. <laughs> I love that everything can just become fuck your apartments. And the gym, you know, the gym has, they're like, oh, well, we added all this high tech gym stuff. And it's like, we put a fucking treadmill in there, two free weights and a pogo stick. You're like that's not a gym. It's the Dwight gym of muscles. It's like this is sand and gravel bags. Like that's not really workout equipment. Like, no, yep, you can lift it, over it. Your shoulder. You guys were just doing construction. You just you took the leftover materials. They didn't move and just threw it in the gym. That doesn't count as a gym. Yeah, it does. All right, dude. Fuck off. Um, what else did I bring in? I brought in a couple of things. I've, I've narrowed the list down to some of the more important ones like that, that I just went over. Um, this actually was something I tweeted out and I got a lot of responses, but it was initially just a, huh, I'm going to ask this on the podcast. I, my, my thing initially was do motorcycles ever get flat tires? Cause you never really hear about motorcycles getting flat tires. Like Robert, we, we know famously a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago, you had a 
terrible day with a flat tire. You hear about t- like cars getting flat tires, but you're never like, oh, I got my, my bike got a flat on the way into work today. I hear about bicycles getting flat tires, but I've never really heard a lot about motorcycles getting flat tires. I'm not a motorcycle guy, so that's probably why. But uh, according to the, re- the replies to my tweet, like, yes, that shit does happen. And it is fucking dangerous, which makes sense. I mean, you have four wheels. When you go down to three, you got a little bit more stability. Imagine being going as fast as you can down the highway and just, oh, flat tire. Sorry. Like, can you imagine being on a fucking motorcycle? Robert, that would be the worst. But like, why don't they have spares? Cars always has, always have spares. Like, are there way, like, there's definitely got to be a way to put a spare on a motorcycle. Where would you put it? They always have those big like saddlebags. Like put a fucking spare on one of them. Well, see, now you're talking about those big motorcycles. Uh, yeah, you can fit them on there. I'm thinking like a crotch rocket. Can't fit one on there anywhere. It just like, it just seems like it's the worst. Like, oh, well, have fun walking wherever you're going because you don't have a spare. I don't know. You never really hear a lot about that, but apparently I mean, it's the, the, incredibly well, dangerous. A lot of people were saying like, my like somebody's brother had like he was trying to do a wheelie and the tire blew out and he just fucking had road rash because he was wearing shorts and a tank top and was all yeah. over they were like he was okay luckily but just it's super dangerous and like i don't know everything every time i see stuff about motorcycles like i do other shit that i i mean maybe people would look at random stuff that i do as dangerous but i don't really consider a lot of the stuff i do is like risky like motorcycles is just like a car you got in a fender bender okay motorcycle you might be dead I just, I don't, it terrifies me. Motorcycles terrify the fuck out of me. Same here. Motorcycles to me are the same as like, Alex, would you like to fly a plane? Absolutely fucking not. No. Oh, I would love to do that. I don't want to fly a plane because well, I would crash the- it. I can't do it. I know I would fuck it up. But here's the thing about that. You know, you're not going to limp away from it. Like you, you crash a motorcycle, you could live and you're just going to be very fucked up and in a lot of pain for a long time before it heals. You crash in a plane. Well, you crash in a plane. You're fucking dead. That's the end of it. There's no limping away from a plane crash. Would you rather learn how to like ride motorcycles or fly, Robert? Fly. Oh, I thought you were asking. Fly. Yeah. Would you have the same? Like, I feel like I'd have the exact same anxiety, if not more. But I guess that it's is much like, safer. You, you're like most likely if I crash a plane, it's over. Well, also think about it. You're in a motorcycle. You're just driving. How often do people not pay attention on the road? Planes, you got air traffic controllers. You got flight plans. Birds, Very unlikely birds don't give be- a fuck, dude. You ever heard of Captain yeah, Sully? It's rare. Ever it's heard rare of Captain though. Sully? Bird flew right in the engine. Had to, yeah. live in the, had to land in the Hudson River. It's rare. Yeah, you got to deal with turbulence and that shit's scary, but you know, whatever. You're flying. I can't imagine. You get to, you get to say, I'm stress. a pilot. Like the stress of being like a commercial airline pilot where you're like, there's just a couple hundred people on this plane. Their lives are in my hand. Yeah. That's only if you care about other people though. But like, you're just like, like an I'm ambulance driver. Like if you drive an ambulance, very important job, very important needed job. You maybe have like two people whose lives are in your hands at that point. It's like airplane. You're just on a Tuesday and you got 200 people that you could just like kill at any moment. Yeah, that's why they don't let pussies be pilots and why you'll never I be I would one. be. The anxiety. The anxiety. Just thinking about it, I am getting a pain. I'm about to have a panic attack just thinking about, like, possibly flying with that many people. Were like, If you're like, Alex, you have to do this podcast and 200 people's lives depend on it. I'd be like, I resign. Why do you think pilots I, drink before flights? They, they're not allowed to. Not anymore. Thanks, Obama. Yeah, he really ruined flying, didn't he? What, you think back in the 50s, the only people drinking and smoking were in the back of the plane? No, the pilots are up there having a good time. Like, oh, they'd probably leave and have a drink with the people in the back of the plane. And regulations got in the way. Big government ruins the fun. That study where it was plane. like, they interviewed all those air, those old airline pilots, and they were like, like 60% of them admitted to having a drink or two or more or whatever it was before flying a plane. It was like, what? Yeah. You think if you got on a bus, same? if you but got on a Greyhound bus, and it was like, there's a 60 percent chance this guy has just crushed some fucking margaritas at the Chili's down the street, like that wouldn't surprise like, me at all. I'd be like, I don't really want this guy driving. Also, me. <laughs> you got to remember that's back in the 50s and 60s when people were probably just having a couple drinks before they got in the car anyway. 
They didn't say it was bad. They used to tell you uh, the specific brands of cigarettes were good for you. Hell, growing up, my dad used to have a drink like every time we got in the car. But then again, he had called, four that's children. Called a that's called a yeah, roadie. Yeah, he had four children. I think at that point, you're allowed to have a drink at all times. You got four fucking kids. Fair. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and pilots, motorcycles. Just, that's how you did it back then. You gotta, motorcycles you to take off the edge. They do get flat tires on motorcycles. I just feel like we need to have motorcycles that are like, yeah, there are the smaller ones that don't really have the room for for an added on tire. But it's like, why can't we just throw a fucking spare on? Is it is it they're just assuming like, hey, you get a flat, it's gonna be so catastrophic, you won't need a fucking spare. I mean, that's true. I feel like just throw one of those fucking, you know, uh, um, on those those like the souped up like Cadillacs and shit. They have the like, the like, like pearlescent looking like cover on the thing. Like just throw one of those bad boys on one of those big bikes, or just have the wheel be on the front of it like Captain America's shield. Even better. There you go. That's that's pretty sick. But yeah, motorcycles do get flat tires. I learned that. You just don't hear about them a lot. Anybody that's had a motorcycle flat that listens, Gravy Gang, let us know. Um, what else did I write down? Ooh, masturbating is a hobby. Um, I, I wrote that down because that is- You've been like, off all week. I, I have been off all week. That's really what it is. Um, He's getting off all week. Ayo! Yes. Ayo! Um, yes, but like that. Masturbating is a hobby to most people. Like a lot of people enjoy masturbating. That is what a hobby is, isn't it? But like- Nobody's ever like, well, what are your hobbies? Like, well, I, I jerk off almost every day. Um, you know, I, I like watching Seinfeld and playing Xbox with my friends. Like, it's just one of those, like, you just don't talk about it, but it's like, that is a hobby of everybody. So funny you should mention this. Yesterday at work, I was saying, I was like, guys, I don't really, like, have a lot of hobbies. I was like, I, my hobbies are, I go, I play Xbox, and my boss goes, you jack off. I go, that too, I guess. So, yeah, right there. Immediately, that was his first thing he thought of as a hobby. But I said, uh, jacking off, playing video games, and drinking. Those are my only hobbies. Because a hobby, according to... I don't go on hikes. I don't play golf. I don't uh, play basketball. I don't, like, have a rec league that I'm a member of. I do three things when I'm not at work. I guess, yeah, we'll add gambling to it, yeah. Because it's definitely not something I'm good at. It's just a hobby. (laughs) Dictionary.com defines it as an activity done regularly in one's leisure time for pleasure. Tell me that's not masturbation. That's absolutely that's 100% that. masturbation. Like, shit. All right. Well, you know, she's like, you know, Ems is about to, she's got probably an hour left on her shift. I can crank one out real quick. And here's Pull the funny the thing. Some, real fast. I got time. Some people might say, no, it's not, I can't a be picky. It's not I done for pleasure. It I got to do it. I ha- it's not that I want to. I just have to jack off four times a day. You telling me jacking off isn't pl- like a for pleasure? You I'm just saying, just do that. Like, there's somebody, there's somebody out there like, dude, it's maintenance. It's not that I want to keep jacking. Well, off is it is time, it maintenance like, that you sort of enjoy? Because like, I feel like you do. I'm on the your side. I'm just giving you to believe that most times. You know, I'm just giving you the devil's advocate other side of the of the thing. Mas- no, I, I'm 100 percent on your side. Masturbation is definitely a hobby. By the strict definition of the word. That's exactly what the, yeah, it, it says like, oh, it's if something for doing fun and leisure time. Yeah. If you're doing right, that which work, we only condone, we only condone doing it in the privacy your of your time. own home. It's weird. Like when like people are cranking them out in the bathroom stalls at work. I don't understand the logic. I don't get, I don't get me wrong. I have been very horny and hung over at work before. And like, I could do that. Guess what? I won't do it. So I'm not a fucking animal. Wait till you get home. Big Build the suspense. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, okay, I can't wait till I get home. Like you start Light a candle, think, put on some Barry Manilow. Mm. Maybe open a bottle of wine. A box order of Fizzoli's, wine. Order Fazoli's delivered. <laughs> Do they even have Fazoli's anymore? Fuck if I know. I loved Fazoli's. We used to have Fazoli's that like, was right down the street from me in high school. Get some Johnny Carinos. How about that? But Fazoli's was like Olive Garden, but cheaper. <laughs> they cheaped themselves out of business. I loved it. Yeah, they may. They definitely are not there anymore, or at least in that location. Um, what else did I bring up for today? Last thing I brought um, was that trailers are mansions for tiny homes, but they're just like looked down upon. Like if you like the whole tiny house thing is huge now. Everybody's like, dude, 
I want to just move to the country. We live in a tiny house. They have entire HGTV shows based around like tiny houses. And in all of them, like we bitched about it on this podcast. We're like, you know, I just think it's a little small. It's like, it's a fucking tiny house. What did you think you were? It just doesn't have a lot of space. It's like, then don't live in a tiny house, dude. Like, what did you like? Your shower and your shitter are the same fucking thing. Like you're standing over your shitter to shower because it's such a tiny house. You can't be picking and choosing being like, eh, it's a little too small. Yeah. You want to live in a tiny house, you have to make some sacrifices. But like a trailer is just a tiny house that's bigger. But like when you're like, ah, if I, live, I live in a trailer, people look down on those people. People I mean, look down I, people that live in trailers. You think, like, oh, this guy is crazy and artsy. And he plays by his own rules. He lives in a tiny house. It's like, that's just say you like a trailer. I would much rather live in a trailer than a tiny house. Yeah. I like, I'm actually kind of surprised I've never lived in a trailer at any point because like, I feel like that just fits my vibe. Like it's just a chill You may place. not have had the opportunity to present itself yet. That's true, but I've always kind of wanted to. Like Pat, and then maybe Pat, like when things start going well, I upgrade to a yeah. double wide. You seem like a kind of guy like if if you got a little money, maybe you you move up. You don't permanently move up to Fredericksburg with your parents, but like you get some of their land like next to them. You buy some land up near your parents up in Fredericksburg and you're not going to build a house. You get yourself a nice, a trailer a nice there. double wide, but you buy like a brand new one. You get some money, put a little a brand new double wide in there. You put some concrete stuff around it because that bad boy's not going anywhere. And, you know, you just you, you make it as nice of a trailer as you can and you're just happy there. Fuck yeah, man. My, my buddy, his parents, since we were in, like, high school, have had a little spot that they bought super cheap out on Canyon Lake when uh, prices dropped, and they just they just threw a double wide out there. I haven't been in a couple did, years, if, and I miss it. It's a really I mean, fun if spot. You don't live there all the time, it seems like it would be way – like, if it's your weekend spot, like, that seems way easier. Like, if it's a camping place, like, hey, we just put a trailer on this camping area, this camping land I have. Like, yeah, I just need to sleep, need to shit, maybe take a shower there. It's, all, it's got all the stuff you need for it. Throw a TV in there, little Xbox, get some internet. Okay, I'm living happy. And I've also watched Ozark the last week, uh, the final season, the, the last half of it, fucking killer. Love it. Didn't hate the ending at all. Um, but like they live like so Ruth Langmore and then live in trailers. And it's kind of like trailers just like, I feel like they get a bad rap. Everybody's just like, only hillbillies live in trailers. They're like, no, I think trailers should be looked at as tiny house mansions. I think I would have a great time in a trailer. Like, I think being in a trailer park would be the only time I would ever actually want to talk to my neighbors. Just I'd be like, these are my people. Just, yeah, just, it's just like a, a, it's like a yeah, campground. I mean, I just, it's like a permanent campground. I mean, kind of, but also just people that are like, dude, fuck it. I got a trailer. Life's pretty chill. Hang out every night, have a few beers on my porch. Maybe get drunk, throw the beers at a stray, stray cat. You know, what are you going to do? Simple good life. Going back to Ozark, which is just fresh on my mind, they just have the, you have the couch out around wherever the fire pit is. Just whoever sits on the couch, you don't know. You don't know. It might be Pat, might be Robert, might be might be Sam, might be Wheezy, just hanging out there sno snoozing on the couch when you go out there. But you just it just seems like a communal thing, and I think that seems way cooler than a tiny house. A tiny house is like, eh, I don't need anything besides this. I'm all by myself, like a trailer. It's like. Trailer seems more communal. Tiny house is like, I want to go here and no one else is fucking there. Trailer is like, I want to have a little bit more space. And also like, what's up, dude? How you doing? Well, I've told this story before, but one of my apartments I lived at in college, we had a couch out on the balcony. And it was first floor. So it was on the porch, I guess is what you call it, not a balcony. There's a night uh, dude just walked in. He got lost and drunk in the apartment complex, uh, complex uh, saw the couch. Complex. And he just, yeah, and he uh, he slept there for the night, so it became a community couch at that moment. Sometimes you just need a couch to sleep on, you know. Like if I was hammered drunk and I saw a couch sitting out there on somebody's porch, like in an apartment complex, and I was drunk and lost, I'd take the shot. I mean, yeah, it's a college community. Very unlikely someone's gonna walk out and shoot me for sleeping on their couch. Well, yeah, very mo more likely they're gonna be like, "Hey, dude, get up, get out of here." Oh, I'm sorry, dude. I'm so sorry. I got lost. I saw your couch. Yeah. I mean, you when you're in that state that, drunk, it's a, you just got to be apologetic. Shit. If you're apologetic drunk guy, everybody's pretty chill with you. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. Dude. I'm fucking my bad, bro. My bad. You just got to leave the chill vibe out there, yeah. guys. Uh, what did you guys bring in for our, uh, our pre-com segment? I know I took up a lot of time, but I 
no, it's I good. I had some stuff. I saw this meme this week, and it was supposed to like flip the things on like men being misogynistic and saying inappropriate things to women. So just women. It's like four little tiles, and one of them is a woman saying to a man, hey, man, you look cute. You should smile more. And another one, she's, like, walking into, like, the conference room, and you're like, hello, lovely gentleman. And then there's an old lady going, you look way too good to be a cashier to the young guy. And then, You fix your own computer? You're so smart. That's impressive. And, like, I get what they're trying to do and be like, see how inappropriate it is. All of those just seem like fantastic compliments I would love to get. And the uh, person who tweeted it goes, this would shatter the male suicide epidemic. I was like, yeah. Like, I, I, maybe I'm part of the problem. Like, okay, the hello, lovely gentleman one, when they're in the workspace, you probably don't walk in and go, hello, lovely lady. But like, that seems like a nice fucking compliment. Are you kidding me? Maybe I, do. I would know how to take a compliment if any of these things had ever happened in my life. So it gives I me a compliment now, I- and I'm just like... <laughs> Uh, thanks. That's weird. I don't know what to do with that. Like a server six years ago told me I have nice eyebrows. I still hold on to that shit. Still to this day. I'm like, what's your best quality? I got fucking pretty sick eyebrows. I was told that once. Like, are you kidding me? Normalize complimenting men. That's what I see is this. I mean, we've tried to normalize, like telling your buddies you love them. Robert is the only one that's really a holdout on that. But everybody else, like, love you, boys. Love you, love the both of you. I'm so happy that we're doing this podcast. Love you, Gravy Gang. Thank you for listening or watching. Alex, us. you also have good eyebrows, not quite as good as Robert's. Robert's got the best eyebrows. But Robert, your eyebrows are very nice. Your eyebrows, Robert, are fantastic today, buddy. Fantastic See, eyebrows. Means nothing coming from me. If a chick told you that, though, you'd be like. Girls know about eyebrows. That's a great compliment. <laughs> I, I do one like thing going for me. I don't want to brag, but like people tell me like I have I have pretty eyes sometimes, and I'm always like, thank you, you. thank you, thank you so much. Like, I'm like, all right, just like it's Will Ferrell walking away. Like, yeah, it's like it's a small it's a small thing, but I do understand. Like I I I get what you're saying in that meme where it's like this would like why is it so weird when when dudes do it, but they never return it to dudes. It's like I do think that like women though like it's like well you look you're way too pretty to be in this place. And it's like, this guy's going to fucking hit on me the whole time I'm here. Like, I think that that, like, I get the, like, I that think sometimes compliments main. are just like, that's, this is my way. But I said, she looked pretty. I said, she was good looking. That gives me the right to annoy her and, and harass her the rest of the day. It's like, that doesn't give you the right to say, like, but like, I definitely have been like, I, I, I work. Like, I don't, I'm not like, Oh, Hey, you look really pretty today. Like I, I would never do that now just because it's like, I don't know how it would be construed, but like, like I'll be like, I like your shirt, as long as it's not like a V neck and it doesn't have any cleavage on it. Like <laughs> I, uh, I am, I am very like particular about uh, like, yeah, I, I like your shoes. Your shoes are cool. Or, like I'll, I just, I'm more, more so just notice stuff. Like that's a, that's a fun sock or some shit. Like <laughs> to see, I'm not good at it. That's why I don't do it. But like uh, I do, I think women a lot of times like it is like an excuse to like, well, I, I, I said this. You're, you're so beautiful. Well, thank you. That doesn't mean she's interested. That doesn't mean she's interested in you. And there are people that take that the wrong way. And at the work in the workplace, it's like, you looking really hot today. And it's like, that's probably not something you should say at, at, at like work. I think sometimes it does mean like you're, you're just, you have good intentions, but a lot of times those good intentions can be misconstrued. And like, if you were hearing the compliments all the time, then you're just like, oh, not a fucking kid. Like this guy's going to fucking bug me. And it's like, yeah, maybe that's not the way it should be. But I think that's the way it's become where like guys, it's never like this chick is trying to fuck me right now. Like she's going to just harass the fuck out of me at work. And you're like, oh no, she just said like, hey, you get great eyebrows. Like that makes me feel good. Well, that was, if it was the, the other way around. One, I think you'd be like, I'm out. I, that was the number one response of women like replying to that going, well, problem is we give guys a compliment and then they think we're flirting and then they fucking it's just not what we were trying to do it's just trying to give you a compliment i was like see that makes sense because guys don't get compliments they're like oh you gave me a compliment she must be interested and and then they're just like no and the other thing is like my thing if i were to say anything like this to give you a compliment at work i I have the short-sightedness of that like i just assume most guys aren't fucking creeps and just kind of have my mentality which i know is not true because my brain does not work like a normal and i do think i do think most guys don't mean anything bad by it but i think that it's it's the bad like the few of them that do it ruins it for the rest of us yeah it's just i just i assume most guys aren't fucking creeps and i know that's not the thing and and also i like if i were to say i think most guys aren't 
Most guys like are if, not creeps. Like if if I said ever said to a girl I work with, they're like, oh, you, you've got a great smile. You should smile more. I wouldn't be saying it in like the weird dickheadly, like stereotypical way that it's like, oh, come on, smile, pussy cat. Like it's not. I don't. I don't think that way. So it's weird to me when I see it, and that like it's kind of a fucked up thing to say to him because I'm like, oh no, you have got a fucking nice smile. Just start giving really weird compliments. Like I like the way your teeth form when you lift your top lip up. You know, your knees look really good today. <laughs> your knees. See, then it means you're looking below the belt. Like, then what are you looking at? You know, like that's. No, I'm so far below the belt. It's not even sexual. I just and know that like when it's it, above, any... nobody, nobody has knee fetishes. It's, it's below all the good stuff, but it's still above the feet. I'm not in any erogenous zones. I'm right there on the knee. That's fair. I always just know that like one, like I'm in a relationship and two it's like i have absolutely nothing to offer any of these women that would be complimenting me so it's it's obviously just like just just being nice i'm just being polite here oh thank you for telling me about my eyes she's not into me i know that <laughs> it um, would be weird, weird if i like walked into work though it was like hello pretty ladies like, what the fuck was that <laughs> Has it ever been like y'all got like a shipment of fish in and you're like, morning, ladies. You ever tried that one? <laughs> no, uh, what I I always wear a hat. So just to be weird, like if they walk by, I'll just do the hat tip and go, ma'am. The Good old day. dumb and dumber. <laughs> so, some days I'll just pick one of the servers and I'll just do it to her all day long. Just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, the, hat, the hat tip is really a thing of the past. Like you get it in baseball. You get in baseball if like somebody like makes a, a a save at the wall or whatever, like set, robs a home run. You get the pitcher to that. Sometimes you do it to the fans, but it's like very rarely is that the uh, morning. Like we like bring that back. Cowboy, the hat hat. Tip. cowboy hats can do it. No, still. I just need the bill, just like the. Just well, I'm saying, the, I, I think people bill. cowboy hats still do the morning, ma'am, or you know, so it's, it's a stem of just slightly taking off the hat and be like. Morning, and then sometimes you just give the tip. Ball catch doesn't really happen, but I highly encourage all of you guys to bring, bring back. it back. Bring just, it back hat tips. But you gotta go, ma'am. I mean, it, it, technically it's stolen right from Dumb and Dumber, but it's funny. Nobody expects Robert, it anymore. Did you bring anything? Do you guys think I look Asian? <laughs> <laughs> I could see uh, Southeast Asia. I could. You could, I, like maybe I could like being like, like Filipino. Filipino. Yeah. I've never now that thought... you say that, if he like, if I did like, I know you're, you're like your last name is Barbosa, mm -hmm. so like that to me leans to Spanish. Yeah, pirate. but Captain Barbosa, Caribbean. There was also pa Southeast Asian. Captain Barbosa was a squid. I didn't know that. never saw the movie ever. Which, if you look at somebody was pointing out, like how the CGI he wasn't. And, that was Davy Jones. That was Davy Jones. Fuck, you're right. Yep, you're right. Good call. Um, the CGI on on him actually holds up to this day. It was pretty, pretty good when you look back at it. Um, but um, yeah, Barbosa kind of gives it away to me. It's either pirate or Hispanic. But if you told me you were like Filipino, I think I would. Like, I would believe you. I wouldn't have a reason to not believe you. I would if you were like, "What is my ethnicity?" I'd be like whoa why do you want me to tell you that first off but then if you like well just we're just friends it's just friends talking i'd be like i would guess that you are hispanic and also you've helped me with spanish words before so mm -hmm. i feel like and you, you know we're in texas it's kind of a close proximity thing chris hogan that used to do the podcast there were people that thought he was hispanic i could see cuban yeah i guess so yeah i've just never seen that in myself and so like i have like a, a video doorbell camera that like will say who's at the door and my neighbor's um husband by race no by, by like their face there's a lot at the door <laughs> there there is a filipino man at the door <laughs> and my 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 neighbor's husband is asian but my camera has mistaken me for him at times it, it, it'll say like his name is at the door i'm like no that's not him that's me what yeah so your camera's a racist camera is profiling no i mean it, it is a similar uh 
like like I said, how we both guessed uh, Filipino. It's it's a similar complexion. Maybe. Yeah, but I feel weird as a white discussing complexion <laughs> and stuff. I'm See, I'm gonna, a modern I'm not, man. I'm so far lie. past. I'm so far past it. I'm okay with it. I'm just scared. Like, there's gonna be some clip of this eventually in seven years that just gets I don't canceled. <laughs> I don't see color. I only see complexion. That's true. That's true. Um, I mean, but yeah, like I, I've met people that are like like Filipino that that like have similar complexion. Yeah, so like I get that. And then like it is it is crazy where you're like like David Ortiz, like like you you would not think that he was Hispanic until you hear him talking and stuff like that. And it's 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 just like I don't know. It's the beauty of baseball. I don't know. I feel weird. Now, <laughs> I, I was just gonna let you talk and then stay silent yeah. just to make you feel bad. Yeah, I did. It no, worked. It, it was it, it was funny actually at work. The other, we've got this um, this lady. Uh, I'll say her name, Barbara. She comes in. She's an older lady, eccentric. And uh, somebody the other day was like, "Well, what do you like? Where do you think she's from?" And I go, I go, "If I had to guess, I would say like Spain." Um, like what? Like she speaks Spanish. I was like, Spanish. You know. I was like, you know, people, I was like, you know, people from Spain are white, right? And he was like, I had, he's like, I had no idea. I was like, yeah, dude, it's a European country. (laughs) It blew his mind. He had no fucking idea. I was like, yeah, dude, Barbara is, uh, and she's old and just rich as fucking like, like I said, eccentric. She's a little bit crazy. She's a lot of fun, but she's, she always speaks Spanish with all the staff. So that's why the guy was like, dude, talking to her, I had no fucking idea. I was like, yeah, dude white people from spain buddy that's the whole thing that's weird to me where it's like um like when you have to put out fill out like race and stuff like i mean i guess if you're american you're caucasian white whatever like what there's white people in america but it's like like you're you're like no no but they're like oh these people like he's he's not this he's italian and it's like italian people are white too like there's white italian people there's also black italian people and there's the darker complexion italian people it's like weird that it's just like white people though and you're like but like a lot of people are white that aren't white you know what i'm saying <laughs> like no but it's like like would you say like you're like like in spain like I've you would say you're hispanic that way. that's funny but when you say like like yes like there's white people in spain it's like yes but they're still hispanic they just appear more white you know and it's like it's weird that it's just like white is always lumped into like which I get it, like historically, white people have been the most problematic of all of them. I get that. I'm not taking that away. But it's like, no, you're white. It's like, but he's from Sweden. Like, well, ha, ha, this guy, he, he's from, he's Nigerian. He is a Nigerian over here. Okay, and this guy, he's he's Spanish. That guy's white. It's like, but he's this guy's from from Italy. This guy's from Switzerland. This guy's from Sweden. They're not the same guy. It's like, no, they're white. One category. <laughs> well, I mean, technically, you could say, uh, you know, Nordic. You could get into the Nordic isn't a race. Is it a race? Oh, it's pretty goddamn close, according to Hitler. I've well, seen the 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 rise of kind of trolling. I don't know if exactly trolling, but like people calling Elon Musk African American. That's mostly I mean, trolling. Is. Yes, uh, he, he is. is though. He is by definition. He is but from yes, Africa. It's, it's, lives in America. It's a troll. Well, that's just when people are shitting on him. They're like, you're you're hating on an African American business owner. Wow. Which is always like, okay, that's funny. That's funny to me. Yeah. Like, he is from the Elon most problematic have, area. I'm not gonna lie. Hasn't gotten old. Africa. The Elon Musk Twitter, just people like that are because it's like now you're at the point where it's like still hanging out. Like that's like the guy that like still gets really mad that you're not wearing a mask at the grocery store. Which like, I haven't run into that, but like if you still are just furious that somebody's not wearing a mask at the grocery store, it's like we're still hanging on that. Still, like, come on, let it go. This was two weeks ago. Elon's got Twitter now. Like, just let's breathe. <laughs> the world didn't blow up in that time. Let's just let's just see how it goes. Like everybody likes to be chicken little right now. It's like, oh my god, no, this is not a safe place. And I'm not saying how other people should feel. To me, on the outside looking in. Like you're allowed to feel however you want to feel, but on the outside looking in, it's like Elon Musk buying Twitter doesn't mean the Holocaust starts tomorrow. Like that's the crazy hypothesis to put together from Elon Musk buying Twitter. Like, no, I don't think that's going to happen. Let's just maybe pump the brakes a little bit. And people are like, what is Twitter for? I don't know. Technically I the sales still won't go through for like a couple months. 
Twitter is also great for asking people if you should wash cast iron skillets and everybody either like freaks out or they get what you're doing. And I got a lot of advice on what to do with cast iron skillets. Lots. Lots. Did anyone say to turn that some bit sideways and stick it straight up your candy ass? No. Uh, some people okay, said so like, the rock try and answer. clean it in okay. the microwave. That was a good one. Um, Ooh, turns out the good. best way to do it is just power wash it. I don't see why not. Yeah, it worked for me. Um, so that was our pre cum segment, right? Everybody had, everybody shared. Um, that was a pre cum segment. We're going to get into what is back in the news this week. The Comeback Kids segment brought to you by our good friends at Southern Star Brewing Company, the best beer in the entire world. Mother's Day coming up. That's going to be a Comeback Kid here in a little bit. Mother's Day coming up this Sunday. Don't forget, get your, your cards out now. If you're listening to this right now and it's like Wednesday, go fucking buy the card. Go buy the card. Send it to your mom. You got to make sure you get your mom a card, all right? All right, guys. We told you. There's your warning. But um, they It's have, literally the least you could do. They have a whole thing for moms going down at Southern Star. Our good buddies, Vortex, they're going to be playing at the Moms Day celebration up at Southern Star, 3525 North Fraser Street up in Conroe. That's going to be awesome. I have plans with my mom already, or else I would definitely be up at Southern Star with her showing her how awesome that brewery is she was just up there not too long ago for the dar like amara and still but like she gets it there's gonna be all kinds of awesome food southern star brewing company the best beer in the world let them know you're part of the gravy gang they'll hook you up they'll be like, oh gravy game come on in try some of this they have a ton of new beers on tap the the yuli the pineapple ipa pat loving that yuli guriel yes i did your astros fan you're gonna go on and try that they still have some dar and like a marlin two electric boogaloo the mango sour of ours is still available, although they're running out. They're running pretty low. So this is, I would say this is definitely the last weekend you're guaranteed to be able to get any darn like tomorrow. You can still fill up growlers. Yeah, if, if you ran out and you want to go refill before they're gone, go and ask for some pasta gravy, darn like a Marlin electric boogaloo. They'll hook you up. There's something for everybody at Southern Star Brewing Company. Emma has been crushing some bombshell vits this week. I know those are going away though. We, uh, we got loaded up on <sighs> get some them of all those. you can. Uh, Emma's been crushing some of the bombshell wits. I obviously, you know, I love the strawberry bombshell blunts, love those. And then I have been just savoring the last of the growler that I have of darling, like a Marlin too. Uh, the Southern brunch, Pat's drinking that. If you're, you're more of a mimosa guy or gal, that's their, their orange citrus shandy. It tastes like a mimosa in a can. It's amazing. There is truly something for everybody at Southern Star Brewing Company. There's another new one. You're forgetting what day is today. The new oh May the fourth be with you. The Nutrigal number two, right? That's return. Yeah, return Nutri-Gal, of Nutrigal. Something. Uh, it's a stout. I don't know if it's Imperial Stout. Seems like it would make sense, you know. Star Wars mm-hmm. Imperials. Mm-hmm. There you go. Uh, are we still thinking of going up tomorrow? Are you backing out? I can't go tomorrow. Oh, you son of a bitch! I cannot go tomorrow. I did not look ahead because. West Ham plays the final leg of a Europa semifinal. I have to go watch the boys. I have to go watch the boys. It's the biggest game in their, their history right now. You can drive up. Oh, what, what time is the game? Uh, it's, the boys are all watching it at the bar. What time is the game? Two o'clock. Drive up in the morning. I might. I'll, okay. I'll, we'll talk I'll, after. I'll, we'll talk I'll, after. I'll, we'll talk I'll, after. I'll call, I'll call and say. I'm just kidding. I can't do that either. Then. Fine. <laughs> Guess I'm not going either. Fuck it. I might still drive up and go. I want to check out. They got uh, new new glassware, new T-shirts, and, of course, the new Mandalorian beer. Now my day's ruined. If West Ham doesn't win, I'm going to be so mad. I'm going to be so mad. I might might have to go up anyway and then not get you any swag. Don't you dare. Keith would never let that happen. He would never. Sure, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. Plus, I kind of want to go up there and see if I can get one more growler of the. Uh, Got of the it beer. before it's gone. This is probably the last week. Um, also, Keith, shout out to Keith and Southern Star, the, the 52 podcast. He's got his own podcast now. Yep. Something else to check out. Ro- Robert took a week off on uh, recent studies. So Jess, go check out the 52 podcast. Give that a listen. Let them know. Pass the gravy sent you. Um, but yeah, Southern Star Brewing Company, man. If you're drinking a Southern Star, you, you, you can get it at, like any grocery store specs. 
Total Wine. They got all the Southern Stars there. Uh, you're drinking a Southern Star, tag us at Pass Great Pod. Tag them at Southern Star BC and at Southern Star Brewing Co. on Twitter and Instagram. Let them know you're supporting the people, supporting the podcast. Southern Star Brewing Company, the best beer in the entire world, the official beer sponsor of Pass the Gravy Podcast and the Comeback Kid segment. It's the Comeback Kid. The Comeback Kid of the Week. The Comeback Kid of the Week. Bitch. All right, we were just talking about it. So our first comeback kid this week is moms. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms, the PTG moms, Danielle, Weston, uh, Ashley, Emily, Melissa, Hyde, Ashley with an I, even though she's a hater, even though she is a hater that just hates on anything I ever do. Um, we, got, we got Casey. I'm trying to think of all of the names. I should have definitely written these down. Um, all the Danielle. dog moms. Kenya, Kenya, who could fucking, yeah, see, it's, it's me trying to go, I'm trying to think of the people that I'm like, who else am I not remembering? And it's the people that I would remember the most that I'm, I'm forgetting about Danielle West. And we love, we love all of you moms on past the gravy. That listen Emma's a dog party. mom. Emma is a dog mom. Your mom, my mom, Robert's mom, everybody's mom. Love you, mom. Love you, mom. She's definitely not listening to this, but love love you, Lori, mom. In case I'll play you her this far. I'll play her that. But yeah, your mom does secretly listen. So time to time she does. She'll like send me a message and be like, that was really funny when you said that. I was like, oh, yeah. Did you hear me say cunt like six times before that? I was. <laughs> My mom um, doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> she I, doesn't. Um, she'll laugh. Was that Love us? Did mom. we talk about that on the podcast last week? Or am I imagining that? We talked about everything on the podcast last week. So probably. <laughs> probably. Probably. Did. Um, but yeah, happy Mother's Day to all the moms. And, uh, you know, make sure you call your mom, tell your lover. Send her a fucking card, guys. Send her a fucking card at least send her a fucking card my uh mom i think my brother uh, and i have lately been uh we we got her an ipad a while back and she freaked out like thinking like she's like this is too expensive don't do that so then our joke is like every mother's day or her birthday which is next week it's the or the 16th is my mom's birthday so we get to double up on her my brother and i have just been sending her like every microsoft surface laptop every macbook everything and it's like hey i've been seeing this has been getting good reviews and she's like i do not want another ipad i don't need a macbook i'm like so you want two macbooks do you want like the one with the like, two screens? And she's she's called us multiple times this week, be like, do not get me an iPad. I'm like, iPhone, got it. I'll order it. <laughs> what well, uh, uh it's just a funny running bit that we always do, and she gets really worked up about it. And it's like, we're not gonna do that stuff, but okay. What I think I'm getting from my mom is this uh you get sent this kit and it's just like a bunch of different types of alcohols and the mixer. So like you can make like strawberry margarita, this kind of margarita, Ooh, nice. like and all this kind of stuff. Like that's why I love my mom. She's easy to buy for. Be like, booze? Got it. I'm definitely gotcha. my mother's son. Have you already got your mom something, Robert? I have not. Do you have plans to, like, do you have what you're going to, you just got to go get it? Or are you like, I got to start now? Thanks for reminding me, fellas. I'm thinking about it. Like, I, my mom has told me multiple times that she doesn't want anything. She just wants me to go visit. But... I don't know if I can trust her. If have I don't you show up with anything. Maybe get her an ancestry DNA to see if you have any Asian heritage. Oh, and then it's something good for you and her. <laughs> Might not be so, a bad call. But then they're so also going to clone they're going to clone your mom too. Yeah. So like that's the problem. Oh, that's cool. I bet no. your mom's a very nice lady. But like we don't that's why we don't believe in the DNA stuff, guys, because they're going to fucking clone you and then they're going to kill me and then have me, the, the clone me, do whatever they want me to do when I, that's what my, I'm sure that's what my apartments are trying to do. They're going to find clone me and the second they can, they're going to kill me and be like, Alex, just shut up and live in this fucking apartment complex. I mean, I'm sure that I'm funnier than my clone me, but in every other way, the clone me would be better. Probably. Better person, more empathetic, nicer. But sometimes they have like a defect and maybe it's just got like, it's, it's weird. It's I've weird. got a lot of defects. If they only have one, that's an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, moms, they're back this week in a big way. Um, unrelated to moms, cooking and domestic bliss, domestic blicks. Domestic blicks is back because. Wow, you're going to go me, from moms to cooking. Wow. Thanks. Very thanks problematic. Me, Emma has been able to enjoy so much domestic flicks this week because i've been off and i was like you know what on sunday i was like you know you know what you're 
she's she's gone back to school she's taking a class that's on tuesdays and thursdays but she's got to do all this group work and and homework and stuff for it she's got a new another job she's running a company as well she's got a job that's got to work in mornings and stuff and i was like you know what let daddy take care of this week cooking so uh i've been cooking for us i've been you know whipping it up in the kitchen just i'm like gordon ramsay out here i made burgers on monday uh we had we have taco tuesday every week so i made the tacos i didn't put them in the slow cooker or anything i went and got the ground beef taco bell hard, like white guy tacos hard tacos or the, the hard shells trash the, tacos. The taco bell kind and then just fucking the, the little uh taco seasoning threw it in that bitch fucking made some delightful tacos frozen pizzas today that i'm gonna make maybe i'll order in tomorrow but <laughs> so it really was two solid days and you then we'll are figure a it master out. chef myself my friend um bacon and eggs in the morning Got the little uh, cast iron skillet out. That's really what here's, made me just here's what you do. tweet out. Like, what do we do with cast iron? Here's what you do. Get yourself some rice. Get some peppers. Cut them up. And then throw some eggs. At, dude, make some fried rice at home. It's super easy to do. But it looks like a meal that actually, like, took time and thought. But right, it really, my you Thursday, just my you throw, one, the, yeah. throw the rice in the pan. Let that shit start to brown a little bit. Then throw the peppers. At the end, throw the eggs. Once those start to cook, throw a little cheese and just mix that bitch. That's what I did for today for breakfast, except I used my this leftover pulled pork my sister had. Put the oh, rice, nice. then the pulled nice. pork in there, and that already had some peppers and shit in it. Then crack the eggs, then some cheese, mix that up, and then threw red peppers on top. I had like a full fucking plate of that. I'm not going to have to eat until like 9 o'clock tonight. It was delicious. It's pretty great. Yeah. I might that's that's the that good thing tomorrow. about cooking, too, is when you have a couple different leftovers in the fridge, and you're like, I'm going to fucking combine this shit and make some mega shit. Yeah. yeah. That's what I like to do. I'm like, what, what do we have leftovers of? Oh, we got onions. Guess who's throwing onions in their egg right now? This guy. Why? A little onion, a little garlic, some tomato, a little yeah. pasta, olive oil, yeah. and basil. That's a meal right there. It's great. A little shredded cheese on top. It's great stuff. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I haven't done, the, I'm not doing the dishes on this stuff or anything. Like, it's like, I can only do so much, but like domestic flicks. Emma is getting all of it and we're like, no wonder she's marrying me. She Guy, tried, and he tried, can cook. She gets all this, this and off. I cook. You started this off by saying, I'm going to make it easier on her. I <laughs> did. You she not to cook. Hold on, hold on. Then you ended it with, but I'm still making her do the dishes. No, I don't make her do the dishes. Just, just sit in the sink this week. <laughs> just do. She that's worse than me leaving a pile of hair in my bathroom. <laughs> I don't think that's worse. It is because it's just my bathroom. You're sharing the kitchen and she's having to stare at these dirty dishes that you refuse to clean because you can only do half of a good job. Well, I mean, when the dishwasher gets unloaded, I'll, I'll do more dishes. Why don't you unload the dishwasher? It takes too much time. Put on a podcast. Unload that dish. Time, know. It takes four minutes. Look, I'm too busy scrubbing down and, and, and you know, hosing down the cast iron skillet that I got. Touche. I'm, I'm seasoning that bad boy. Touche. Great. But yeah, domestic blicks back because of me. Um, also back this week, Dave Chappelle making his return. He was in uh, in Hollywood at the Hollywood Bowl, and somebody tackled him or tried to tackle him. Tried. It looked, it looked like he like just kind of sidestepped it. And, Old school um, big bed, man. Just shrugged that shit off. I mean, will we, if you've seen like his latest specials, like Dave Chappelle's pretty jacked right now. Um, so I wouldn't like if, if you were telling me, like, what are some comedians that you don't want to like try and tackle while they're on stage or fight? Um, I would say probably Joe Rogan because of MMA, Brendan Schaub because of MMA, and then probably Dave Chappelle just because he looks jacked as fuck. Like those but are Chris probably DeStefano my top. in there. Chrissy D. He's DeStefano. pretty jacked. Yeah. And he's, he's just tall too. So like he could punch you from like seven feet away and that like you wouldn't even get close to him. But like Dave Chappelle would be, definitely be on the like guys. I don't want to try and get a, get in a fight with cause he will beat my, sh beat my shit in. And um, turns out that guy got his shit beat in because did you see the video of him getting stretched off and his elbow was going the wrong way? Yeah. He's also <laughs> handcuffed. And it was like, that's one of those things. Like, like, uh, like people always joke, like if somebody like hijack tried to hijack a plane, like, and like, you know, you have to land the plane. Like they're not going to be mad. Like you're like, yeah, we didn't see that. He was also like beat the fuck up. <laughs> like we're just going to kind of let that one go. It's like, did you just try and charge a guy on stage? And like, I, apparently he had a fake gun. That's what I read. I do not 
cannot confirm that, but it said it looked, he had a fake gun. It was the New York times. So they are some sometimes sus when they report things, but um, uh, if, if he, you had anything that could re- like be a gun, like, and then you try and charge somebody on the stage. Yeah. Like nobody's going to get mad at you for beating the shit out of that guy. And that guy got fucked up and then uh the best thing was it was in hollywood so chris rock was like every famous comedian was out there jamie fox came out and was talking with him and then chris rock was like wait was that will smith and that was just i love that i love joke of the week love it joke of the week everybody Um, laughed but dave Chappelle, man like and then somehow it turned into like well did dave Chappelle deserve it did he deserve no no one ever deserves to just be attacked on stage while they're doing anything no one deserves to be attacked on stage okay um but yeah pretty entertaining night at least on twitter last night when all of that unfolded because you just have the it's the elon musk thing it's they're, they're polarizing figures where it's like you either love them or you hate them and then the people that love them it's like it's only positive well that's good i hope twitter tanks and then why would you hope twitter tanks that's bad for the economy blah 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 blah, blah. and then dave Chappelle's like you you're hoping that a guy gets just beat up on stage that, well he shouldn't have beat the other guy up it's like that guy attacked him he's that's called self-defense it's called self-defense and you don't want to get the shit beat out of you and you don't want to get your elbow broken don't rush the stage pretty easy cause and effect right there yeah, I had seen afterwards that Dave said, and so what did happen is he tackled him and then like missed the tackle and then just took off backstage and everybody chased him backstage. And Dave said that him and Buster Rhymes and somebody else like stomped the dude out, which like, man, I hope there's not video of that because that dude's gonna be able, like he ran, and then they caught him, and I'll beat the shit. Out. That dude's gonna be able to press charges. I bet if there's video of that it disappears real quick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If there's no video, oh Dave, shit! Did Dave, that tape just get stepped on? No Dave, way! Dave can just be like, "Oh, I was joking when I said that." We have no idea who whipped the ever living dog shit out of this guy and made his arm look like a flamingo leg bending the wrong direction. But if there's like video one, of it, I mean, it's California where you can fall through, like a robber can fall through your skylight, land on a knife, and sue you. I stole that from Liar Liar, but I still think it's. I was real. about to say that seems just like Liar Liar. Yeah. But I believe Great anybody movie, can sue anybody in California, and it's just going to be fucking crazy. That this state makes no sense to me. Is royal blue. <laughs> Great movie. Uh, yeah, I mean, you got to be like the dude had no plan. You gotta have a plan. Like it's Dave Chappelle. Have a plan. It's a it's a show in a big venue. And then oh no, there's gotta you, be you, you think yeah, uh, you tried to you tried to tackle him didn't pull off the tackle the guy kind of just sidesteps you then you get your ass beat and you think it's gonna just like not just gonna get you're not gonna just get your ass roasted the rest of the fucking time like great idea dude i just can't wait to hear about this in his next special which i think is actually good i think it's gonna be a while though because in his last one he said i'm not gonna put anything out for a while maybe this accelerates it maybe this accelerates it because dave's gonna be just have rogan should just have him on just let rogan have him on (laughs) this is it's longer than that rogan Listen, I'll listen to that one. I just want to hear. I just want to hear what happened. But uh, yeah, Dave Chappelle back in a big way this week. Don't fuck with that guy. Um, also, a comeback kid this week is horses because the Kentucky Derby is is back this weekend. So everybody's going to pretend to care about horse racing. I, um, you know, I'm low key like uh, not like I, I like horse racing. I really got into horse betting or betting on horse racing in the pan- pandemic when that was like the only thing that was on. And I'm pretty stoked for the Kentucky Derby. I was looking forward to my boy. Um, I, I thought he was going to be, you know, he was going to be my pick that was probably not going to win, but was going to be a pick. But there was Una Ojo, which I believe that's one eye. Correct, Robert? Una Oja? O- Ojo. Ojo. Una Ojo. Fucking way cooler. Way cooler. Uh, but like, I, I was. Like, oh, I was never a, put that together. That that's what he was trying to say. Yeah, yeah I was Spanish. like, I was like, the horse. His name one. It's one. And I asked my one friend eye. Chili at work. I was like, it's I. And he was like, yeah. And I was like, this horse has to have one eye. Let me Google it. And I googled it. And I was like, this is fucking Sea Biscuit. It's Sea Biscuit. He's gonna run in Kentucky. Absolutely, I'm gonna fucking bet this horse. And the I odds are great. Owned and, by left eye from TLC. Well, the horse does have one eye. It lost an eye in a training accident when it was when it was uh, just a foal as a foal. But still. But not a race. Pretty awesome. Sea Biscuit, one of my favorite movies because fucking that horse, horse too small, jockey's too big, doesn't matter. You still get dubs. And um, horse is not in the field. Uno Ojo is not in the field. So I'm a little upset about that. But I did send us all a list 
of the field and we're not allowed to pick favorites. So Zandon is out. Nobody can pick Zandon. And also let's throw out Epicenter because Epicenter is really good odds too. Let's try and pick a not one of those that a not favorite to win the Kentucky Derby and see if we're right. And I will bet on everybody's pick. All right, I'm pulling it up. Robert, you, said- you get to pick first. So basically, besides the top two, Zandon and Epicenter, those have the best odds. Pick somebody else. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Smile Happy. Fuck, that's an awesome name. Smile There's some good Happy. names in here. Yeah. Um. Initially, I want to go with Messier because, like, hockey, awesome. And then Nyquist, named after Gustav Nyquist, a former Red Wings player. That Ny- Nyquist won the Kentucky Derby. So hockey or play horses named after hockey players have had winning records in the Kentucky Derby. Messier, I'm gonna sprinkle a little money on Messier, but if I'm trying to respect the exercise and not pick one of the top horses, like the top favorites, cool name, Cyberknife. That's what I was drawn to too, Cyberknife. I think Pat, uh, I think we I think we put money on Messier and Cyberknife for sure. And then what was it? Happy or smile? What would you pick? Smile Robert? happy. Smile happy. Fucking, I'll throw a little money on smile happy. And if I win anything on smile happy, I give you half of it. If smile happy wins the derby, you get half whatever I win. It's a good deal. Pretty excited about the Kentucky Derby, where it's just like everybody has no idea. That is the most blind betting you will ever do in your life is the Kentucky Derby because like I don't follow these horses. Like you can look on the sheets, you can read up about the horses. There's horse people. I am not a horse person. I mean, those are called centaurs usually, but there's horse racing people. <laughs> um, I enjoy horse racing. I do not, I couldn't tell you about like, you know, the uh, like how many furloughs and shit like that, that they're furlongs, whatever it is. Like I'm not going to break down the X's and O's, but it's fun as fuck to bet on. And it's fun to go to the track with like, hundred bucks and put six, seven bucks on like a trifecta boxed in where it doesn't matter what order they come in. As long as they're the three horses you pick are first, second, and third that I did that when I was camel, when I went camel racing the last time I was at the racetrack and on the last race of the night, it fucking hit. And like, just, I, I won money and then paid back all the money I was down that night. And it was fucking awesome. And it's like one, you win one of those races like that. And it's just the rest of your day is made. And then usually you don't hit it, but then it's like once every couple of times you go, you'll hit something. And then you're just like, fucking all right and you feel like a king i understand why they call it the sports the sport of kings because like maybe that's what boxing was i don't fucking know but horses horse racing could have been the sport of kings because you could afford them and like you just feel like a king when you win a fucking horse bet because you're like i don't fucking really know anything about these guys one of my if i had money dreams that i would love to do and this is like because we all know how cheap i am it would have to be i would have to hit like the 300 an $80 million mega ball. Like I would have to have money that I could never spend. I want a championship horse that would someday be in like the Kentucky Derby and stuff like that. And they, but I want to name mine like Greg. Everybody gives these horses weird names. Zozo, just, Cyber Doug. Yeah. It just, yeah. Barney. That's why our buddy <laughs> Ramundo, our buddy Ramundo, uh, RIP James. We love James, but like he has a cat named Amy and he had a dog named James. And I was like, love those. Those are fucking awesome names. Cause they're not, they're not pet names. They're not pet names. Those are like, like, Oh, I was just talking to Amy over here. Like who is it your girlfriend? No, it's my cat. Like I, I love mean, that. That's what my family was. Sarah, Brady, Quinn. I knew a guy we, that we had, could... I knew a guy that had a dog named William. And it was like, that's such a proper name for a dog. Mm-hmm. You can go by Will or Willie was William. The craziest uh, we've ever can you gotten let William is we have outside. One named Bella. Bella's a good one. I think Bella and Stella, a lot of people have Bellas and Stellas. But those are cool yeah. names. There's never like not a cool Stella or Bella. Yeah. And now don't Unless get me wrong. We, 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 we give our dogs hundreds of nicknames. Oh, yeah. Brady, we used to call Baba Ganoush because he's the big guy. Mm hmm. Yeah. You know. But I'm pretty stoked. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to put a, uh, if you don't know what it means, you don't have to look it up, but uh, it's, I want to put a trifecta box on Messier, Cyberknife, and Smile Happy. If in any combination, the three of them finish first, second, and third, which doesn't seem like it's going to happen, we're going to win a fucking fortune, boys. Yeah. Because with the odds that 
Cyberknife and Messier have to get those two to have them in the top three. We might have like PTG. We'll just buy a studio. We'll just buy a studio next. I was about to say, we'll be able to retire from our regular jobs for at least two or three days. But yeah. So, I mean, Messier, you can't not bet on hockey. Right. It's true. It's and it's the playoffs. I mean, other cool name, Tiz the Bomb. That's a badass one. Ooh, pioneer of Medina. Now, Medina Spirit won the Kentucky Derby. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times in horse racing, you have like part of the name from the mother, part of the name from the father. That's kind of cool, I think. But um, yeah, smile, happy, solid. Cyber knife, fucking don't know where that came from, but it's fucking sick. And then I don't know uh, what Matt white a barrio means, but I like that. White Abario? Yeah, I don't know what the hell that means though, but Crown Pride. I'll I wanna I wanna root for Crown Pride to lose. I don't root for the Crown. Fuck you, England. Fuck you, but go west. Get out of here. Go west. Speaking of England though. Also happy um, Jack. I mean, we were we were talking about Happy Jack, but smile happy. We we were already saturated in the happy market. But I mean, I just I like happy jack because we were talking about hobbies earlier, so Mm mm-hmm. Um, uh, on, uh, you were talking about England, but, uh, I got you with this today. We're going to just be a couple of, couple of blokes with a London Derby or Derby, a London Derby going down. London our Derby. Teams. It's the fucking London Derby. They're like, who's playing Arsenal, Chelsea. You're like, no, it's the giants and fucking Packers playing in cut face, cunt face, Tottenham Hotspur stadium. Fucking. I wish we could go to that game just so I could take a shit on the field and I'd leave. And be like, oh, we're going to ban me from here. I never want to come here again. Fuck Tottenham. Fuck them. Gen Z, Zach, talking to you. Fuck your team. Your team's fucking stupid. I don't care if they're higher up in the standings than West Ham. West Ham has – they have other things they're focused on, all right? It's not about how you finish. It's about whether or not you're a cunt or not. And Tottenham – That's true. Are cunts. Um, but, yeah, the Giants play the Packers. They released some of the London games. And um, I would like to propose an idea – for a live stream. So this is future Alex and Pat's problem, but um, I think we should do like full Sherlock Holmes outfits while we're watching it. And we should have to go to like a bar or a pub. That would just be How funny. How are we going to like... live stream from a bar? Well, the soccer bar I go to, we'll definitely have it on. And our buddy, our buddy, Michael Brown from the, the uh, beer sports, whatever podcast. In the morning. No, it's not. It's two o'clock. It was 8 30 in the morning our time. No, I'm looking like, at it right it, now. Is it? It's 8 30 oh, a.m. Thought, fuck. That really ruins it, doesn't it? Well yeah. then we'll do, you we'll do you just come here. We'll go to one of those like soccer pubs that opens early and just like it would just be really funny to walk in and be like, hey, we were watching the London Derby. And they're like, what? They're like, yeah, the Giants are playing the Packers. Can you fucking put that on? I don't give a shit about what, what match is on right now. That would be funny. I mean, we well, where I'll, I'll have. We a, could, I, I want to get I, the I comically. I want to get the comically big Sherlock Holmes pipe, and just sit with it. Like we have to just you have to hold the pipe the whole time. Just just. Can I get another point, mate? Like another point while we're watching Daniel Jones and Aaron Rodgers, have a little slug fest, eh? I you dress like Sherlock Holmes. I'm just gonna dress like a hoodlum fucking soccer fan so like, i'm gonna a have my fucking wanker. jersey on but i'll have like one of those hats but also like gold chains like i'm gonna dress like a real oh. british dart bag no we have to buy the f- british flat hats with each of our team well that's what i meant yeah i want to buy a oh, kangol wait. one and wear it backwards like date mike Ooh, do they sell that as they like, definitely Packers one they definitely have to right you can't I'm, tell me I'm you're gonna Googling have a london Packers game flat cap right now Uh, I mean, the Dubliner Scally Cat that's green. <laughs> I'm finding green. I'm not finding Packers once. I don't know. Wait, what, what, what was yep. the C word that yep. you called it? Um, what's you it called? Flat- uh, I'm trying to, I'm telling you the exact name of it. It's popping up. It's, um, new men's new era peaky duck bill fitted hat. And it's just got, it's got like the new era logo on the side and on the back. Oh, fucking just like the Kangle. It's got the NY logo on it. I'm absolutely getting that. I'm not seeing any Packers ones. We'll get it off. We don't have to do it right now, but we'll, we got a while. But what do you have the date of the game? Since October 9th. At, October 9th. We're going to do a live stream. Packers, oh, oh. Giants, 
oh. Pat and I are just a couple of fucking blokes, couple of blokes watching the match, having a pint. Maybe we find a fucking bar that's like, hey, y'all should have some like, oh, fucking, of course it is. Cause they just announced the game. Mine is out of stock. They just announced the game. Obviously everybody had to go buy those. You're an owner though. So you should have some pull. I would imagine. Well, I, I would assume in the owner's section of the store that they will uh, release some. Um, I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure we're going to get that figured out. But, like, that would be a lot of fun to have, like, a morning, like, meetup at, like, a pub. If, like, we're, like, we can put some gravy gang in here if you guys want that. And then if they're open for it, like, just have a watch party. It'll be like we're in London, but we won't be in London. I mean, I like we'll have to. I, I don't like being up that early, but you know, we're playing each other. We'll have to put together some sort of bet, like maybe a spread bet or something, which I don't like betting the spread on a game over in uh, England. But Giants have never lost a game in England. Fun fact. We'll, 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 have, time. To. we'll, we'll have to put that together or something. Eli Manning's first ever rushing touchdown was an England game, it was at Wembley Stadium against the Dolphins. Never forget it. I'll never forget it. I'm trying to see um, if they have a Sherlock Holmes hat with Packers stuff. I mean, we can find some stuff to get made. Well, sure. I mean, even if we can't, the Sherlock Holmes hat's like 26 bucks on Amazon, so that's not. Yeah, and you can just put a like, tape of Packers logo on there. But yeah, we got a little London Derby going our way with our uh, our football teams. That's just I'm just like draft grades are back. We don't really have to get into that because we are officially not out of mock draft season. But like the Giants obviously win the draft because I'm going to say that every year because we can't grade a draft when you haven't fucking seen those players play yet well the packers drafted a second round wide receiver and historically we're really 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 fucking good at doing that but he's from north dakota state so fuck north dakota state sorry bro also i I didn't realize like i knew he was a big guy and that he was i didn't realize he was six five or ran a sub four four forty got attitude problem that's really big and really fast it's north dakota state strong he's bison worked on a farm growing up lifting bales of hay all i know is i'm jacked the fuck up yeah it's like i i I mean i've run through all the scenarios in my head with the giants draft picks and stuff like man this guy could be so good and this could happen and like wow daniel jones might have time to throw but we don't need to get into that i did break down as much as i could without getting into like too detailed uh the giants draft picks on the claire and big blue podcast if you want to go listen to that wherever you listen to podcasts me and mike fish did that last night as well and we also previewed west ham's game against the germans tomorrow i don't even want to say their name against the germans the germans let's just say west ham's kind of breaking my heart right now so i'm not feeling optimistic um so it was like i was like optimistic about the whole giants part in the first half and then i just was like please don't let Alex kill himself during the West Ham portion of the podcast. So that's a fun one. If you want to hit the highs and lows of Alex on the most recent episode of Claire Big Blue podcast, also on the past great podcast network. Um, all right. Our last comeback kid this week is star Wars. May the fourth be with you fellas. Um, it is star Wars day. I was watching a Mets game and everybody was show. I, I was watching the Mets, not by choice, but because I, yeah, live long and, Fuck awaken you. <laughs> robert do dude. dude but it like it never fails like you get so many people if you do that every fucking year nobody's like, like and it's like dude you know that he's fucking trolling you know he's trolling but um yeah and then revenge of the fifth is tomorrow we got that um star wars fucking awesome fucking awesome we got the obi-wan trailer came out today that was pretty cool um, oh wait i have to watch which okay that raises a question. It's May the 4th be with you. What Star Wars movie am I going to watch tonight? Got to watch I was it. watching a little bit of The Force Awakens this morning while I was doing some podcast prep just because it was on TV. Um, I don't know. I, what, is your, what is your favorite Star Wars? Robert, I know you're not a Star Wars fan, so you don't have to answer, but what is your favorite? Probably Empire. I mean, Empire is the best one. It's not I would say... But Empire might... or Jedi? I would say Empire or Jedi. Yeah, I might actually go with one of the spinoffs, though. I might watch Rogue One. I haven't watched I was talking about that to somebody last night. I was like, Rogue One, if you're power ranking Star Wars movies, like, and you include all of those, I think Rogue One is, like, top five. Oh, it's definitely top five. Because 
in a new hope and not we're not gonna get too star warsy but in a new hope where you're just like how the like oh they just they built the death star and like the one thing that can blow it up like the one little like oh it's all explained it's all explained yeah but like when you watch a new hope you're just like forever you're like yeah okay so like the one thing that can take down this big thing we just so happen to like give them a fucking card with all of the information and then you watch rogue one you're like oh might watch solo also. They had to do so much to get. But like the the good thing about Rogue One is a great espionage movie that happens to be centered around one of the important most important pieces of Star Wars lore. You could know nothing about Star Wars and watch that movie and go, that was a fucking really good Mm -hmm. movie. It's just it just happens to revolve around that, but it's it's so fucking good. All of it and the visuals of it. Oh yeah. And fucking uh, what's his name? Uh, with the lazy eye, uh, Forrest Whitaker, so yeah. goddamn good. At, dude, how good is Forrest fucking Whitaker, man? Just in general, so always. But like in that one, he's like menacing and fucking a little bit crazy. Oh, fucking love that. Love guy. it. Um, yeah. So Star Wars Day, guys. Happy Star Wars Day. May the fourth be with all of you guys and live long and prosper. Um, because Star Wars Day is today. Um, and because Robert was not able to do the podcast last week, we said we were going to push it back. This was actually going to be the topic we were going to do a mock draft of last week. We didn't tell you guys what we were thinking about, but we ended up holding on to it because there's villains and heroes in Star Wars. There's villains that we can do a mock draft of that could be Star Wars. They don't have to be Star Wars. These are any villains of anything from anywhere. Um, mock draft of villains we are tied this is the final mock draft of the season it was supposed to wrap up before the draft but because robert had to had had something come up we weren't able to do it um so we're going to do our final mock draft now winner take all last week or two weeks ago pat had 46 percent of the votes uh i had 34 percent, and robert had 20 percent. we do reverse order in a snake draft so it goes robert me pat pat me robert robert me pat etc um Winner of this one takes it all. This was submitted to us by David Ruiz two weeks ago. Shout out to David Ruiz. Um, let's go, fellas. The mock draft of villains. Robert Barbosa, pick one, one. Who you got? I really hope it's a three-way tie. That'd be hilarious to me. It's, uh, if, the, if the voting was a three-way 33, tie. 33, 33, 33, yeah. yeah. But, but here's the thing. Would, would Twitter, if we all get the same amount of votes, would it just naturally cycle one of us up to 34%? I don't know. It could, but I don't know. The, the, see, we just that's just something we gotta not hope. If it is a three-way tie, we just leave it. Yeah. We <laughs> just leave it. Be. Yeah. If two people tie, we have to have a we have to have a another one, like a sudden death one next mm-hmm. next week, and like one of us will just decide. But whoever's not in the final two will decide. But I would it would be hilarious. It was like, nope, that was that season was a tie. <laughs> there was no winner. All right, my one one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the Yankees. That's the a good Yankees, one. The, the evil, evil empire. empire. That's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Um, that's really solid. Uh, I didn't have them on my list at all, but I understand. Not why. surprising. And actually, that was a good like because we were talking about the Yankees a little bit last week with the letter and everything. So like that was another like oh villains that would be perfect to spin that into the mock draft. So that plays. Yankees 1-1 one, one, where Robert's going. I'm going to go Star, Star Wars. I'm going to go Darth Vader. That's really good. That's cool. Everybody could imitate the breathing. Just fucking James Earl Jones. Awesome. The Darth Vader. Definitely had that on the list. Um, not going to lie, guys. Good. Absolutely shocked Hitler sitting there at number three. I'm taking I Hitler. Him. I didn't know we were going to go that way. <laughs> but, yeah, I had him. I was going to maybe steal him at the end. Solid pick. I, absolutely shocked. And you know what? Got to go back to back. Taking Osama bin Laden, number four. God, I had him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how both of those. When Robert started out saying, I hope, like before he picked, I thought he was going to say, I hope we all have the same number one Hitler. Wow. <laughs> well, this was my one one. I thought Darth Vader was probably going to be the first pick. I don't know. I mean, Robert's not a Star Wars guy. I just assumed that was going to be the first pick. Um, this is, I think, the ultimate villain of all villains. Satan. One Satan. It's a good the one. The original villain. Um, Satan. So I'm taking him. In the second round, that's a steal. That is a good one. I was I was gonna maybe like if it made it to the end, that's what I was gonna go with. But I guess for my number two, I'm gonna go the Joker. 
Great villain. Yeah. And I don't think Great we have to villain. specify. You just get the joke. Whichever Joker you at home think is the best, you get to keep that one. It's the Joker. Everyone yeah, knows the Joker. Joker. It's the Joker. Right, but it's not like we, I, you didn't have to be like, oh, the Heath Ledger one specifically. No, like, you, know, just, you get the Joker. The Joker. Uh, all right, you got another pick here. All right, now I'm going to go with, I had to go with Thanos. You know, Marvel was going to come in here. But some people would say that Thanos did some good, you know? Yeah, so a lot of people would say Thanos was right. I think that's what trying... makes a good villain, where you're like, yeah. where you're conflicted about what, it's a great what, point. what they do. It, it's a great he, point. Had a, he had a good mission. He went about it wrong. Um, okay, this is like this is one where it's like it's just staring me in the face. This I'll tell you guys the other one I was gonna take if he falls to like honorable mentions, but like Hannibal Lecter, dude, the guy fucking was gonna eat you. Like that was that guy was Good absolutely villain. terrifying. As a kid seeing that movie, I was horrified of that dude. Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter is a good one. Wrap it up. <clears throat> you got two left here at the end. Ooh. God damn it. I want to take this one, but I kind of don't. But uh, fuck it. I'm going with it. Nancy Grace. Fucking great pick. <laughs> great pick. She is a just, fucking just, bitch. Just because it makes me fucking laugh. Oh, my God. I'm not a villain. I am trying to solve crimes and sometimes accuse an entire Duke lacrosse program of rape. And then I take off for vacation on the week that it comes out that actually she fabricated the whole story. I don't even care if that one costs me and it makes me laugh. No, I might vote for you just because of it. <laughs> That's what I, I kind of thought too. Like Alex, when it's time to pick himself Fuck. on this poll, he might go, I fucking hate Nancy Grace. I, so hate, God I, damn I don't hate many people more than I hate Nancy Grace. Okay. Uh, my fourth and final villain. I got like five, six here that I could go with. I am going to pick. I guess it's top. I'll go with Vladimir Putin. All right. Vlad Putin. <laughs> I like how you guys were taking like Darth Vader and the Joker. And I was like, man, fuck all these real people. <laughs> <laughs> I really thought about taking, I guess Robert could take this too, because I'm not going to, but Elon Musk would have just been a funny one. Just to get <laughs> the people talking. But but that's the thing. Half the, he's polarizing. It's going to lose you a lot of votes. Half that's the people true. love him. That's true. Um, okay, this is one. It is a very lovable villain. But he's still a villain. I'm going to go Tony Soprano. That's actually a good pick. I think Tony Soprano plays. Guy. He's not a good guy. You know, like That was the beauty of the Sopranos. It was like one of the first shows that made you be like, am I rooting for the bad guy to like win? It's like Riddick vibes. Like He's not a big good guy, but... Right, he is a villain, he does bad shit, but yeah, I'm going to go Tony Soprano. It's a final pick. Who gives a shit, right? I like that. Last pick of mock draft season, Robert. All comes down to this. Yeah, I'm, I'm really stuck between like three of them. You guys had some good ones. I haven't got anyone like real. Pick me, pick me, pick me. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> the Yankees are real. I guess Pat, the Yankees are real. Pat's a villain. <laughs> I'm going to go with, all right, you guys tell me, is this a villain? Toby from The Office. Yep. That's a good Absolutely. villain. That's a good villain. Toby Flinderson. I mean, in in Michael's eyes, in all exactly. accounts, he's actually just a really nice guy, but Michael fucking How are him. you not killed every hour? <laughs> <laughs> well, he did say, if I, had a, if I had a gun with two bullets, and it was, it was an Osama Bin Laden and Hitler in the same room, I would shoot Toby twice. <laughs> oh man he's a villain he's definitely a villain i'm i'm loving this one this one was a lot of fun and i'm really excited for honorable mentions let's recap though who we took um robert had the yankees the joker thanos and toby flinderson from the office i had darth vader satan hannibal lecter and tony soprano pat had hitler osama bin laden nancy grace and vladimir putin i have no idea where the votes are going to go this week. No fucking I have clue. No idea. I'm really looking forward to uh to seeing it. Again, this is not like who picked the best villain. This is a who had the best four. So try and base your voting on that. Um honorable mention time. We're uh, we're going to post this at like around like 1:30 on Friday. 
Uh, so you can go vote on our Twitter at Pass the Great Pod on Twitter. Voldemort didn't make it into this one. Voldemort was just. <laughs> I, I, you're a villain, but like you're not that scary if you can't touch the guy that you hate the most. You know, there's like a lot Harry, of Harry, you Potter couldn't touch Harry Potter that are mad at us, but you're kind of a bitch, eh. dude. I, uh, I'm actually kind of mad at myself. I wrestled with this one for number four, and I should have taken it and been true to myself. The government. That would, yeah, that would have gone. Well I don't know why I did. I just, took. I don't know. Some people like the government. I'm not one of them. Uh, that, uh, also, uh, uh, El Chapo. That was the other one I was thinking of picking there. El Chapo's a good one. Um, yeah, big, big I mean, villain. the big ones like Pennywise the Clown, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Chucky. All those guys mm-hmm. are villains. The Unabomber. Hans Gruber. Hans the, good, uni- yeah. the Unabomber, yeah. yeah. I was like, my, I was very... Mussolini. Yeah. Uh, Rob Manfrod. He's a horrible, like, horrible I, I was really considering... Roger Goodell was on my list. That would have pandered. Also, Bill O'Brien. Both of those would have been pander picks for me, but I I wrote them both down very early in my list yeah. of people. Just people like... Had... Anybody on a team that I don't like? Roldis <laughs> Chapman. <laughs> He's a villain head, to me, too. Head Judas. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I mean, head, Pont- that's a great one. Pontius Pilate. Quilla oh, DeVille. Pony. Who actually did I have I shared this on the on the podcast where um, my cousin's daughter who was like four years old I, I I think it was Christmas got into like a heated argument they were like what are y'all fighting over and I was like she thinks Corella Deville is a good guy because that Corella movie came out and humanized this horrible woman I was like Corella is not a good guy she's like oh uh-huh, she was she did this and no this happened to her and this happened I was like no 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 what do you what she what? wanted to no. skin puppies to make a coat. And I was like, she wanted to kill all the dogs. The guy that wants to kill the dogs is never the good guy, ever, under any circumstance. Very true. Very and she true. Was like, no, no, no. Coella is not bad. like she was really funny, like trying to like argue. I was like, you're just wrong. Like you're a child. You don't know the world yet. I've seen 101 damage. She's like, I see this. I watch this movie every day. I watch this. Movie. I was like, yeah, but you're watching the biased version. You watch the New York what the New York Times is feeding you through their filter, you know? And the government. You're not seeing the real InfoWars information on Corella DeVille, which isn't really, it's not a conspiracy theory. Corella DeVille's a bad guy or, got, or gal, bad gal. Like she's <laughs> She awful. wanted to skin puppies to make herself a coat. I don't give That's a fuck a what guy. happened to her before that. I don't give a fuck. She gave Perdita and Pongo to the people or whatever. I didn't watch the Corella DeVille movie. One, because I don't fucking like Corella DeVille. I'm never going to do that too. Right. I've already seen it. I've already seen the other movies and I know how she works out. I know I don't need her origin story. I don't yeah, need, I don't, oh, what? She just hated dogs. Some made her hate dogs. Yep. Yeah, I don't need to see a movie about the younger years of Osama bin Laden where he was a freedom fighter trying to beat back the Russians. Okay, still know what he did after that. I also don't want to see like the Hitler like origin story either. I'm probably yeah. not going to watch that one. Know how it turns out. Yeah. I don't want to see a black and white movie about Hitler in art class. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, he was an art student. Don't humanize Corella DeVille. Yeah, but I'm mad that, happened. you know what? Corella should have been on the, on our list for sure. Uh, 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 a young Vladimir adventures, uh, mini series where it's him doing badass missions for the KGB just, just riding around on a horse shirtless. Actually, even in that one, he was probably suppressing innocent people when he worked for the KGB. Probably so was. That's not probably even was. a good example. Um, the wicked witch of the West. They wrote like a whole song when she was dead like that. You got to have Ooh, some pretty yeah. high up villain status to like be like, ding dong, the witch is dead, wicked witch is dead. Like, it's like they those, wrote a whole fucking jolly song that you were dead. Those, those fucking flying monkeys too, man. They scared the shit out of me when I was a little kid. At Hollywood, Hulk Hogan. He was a good guy too, though. That's, no, no, no. But specifically Hollywood, Hulk Hogan oh, was Hollywood, a bad guy. Hollywood, Hulk. Yes. That's when he, yeah. I'm in the NWO, brother. Yeah. Ooh, Vince McMahon would have been a good one. Vince McMahon Arguably was what, good. I mean, that dude's been the villain for like 40 years. Yeah, yeah. Been good one and like people still love him because like he gave us and, the XFL. And a great, I mean, honestly, if you if any of us would have picked him, Mundo would have been like, that's my vote. Yeah, well, look at look at us not pandering. Good on us. Yeah. But yeah. There's, I mean, there's tons more we could keep going with, but I thought we had a great draft of villains in that one. There were just so many people to pick from. All right. Um, I was saying, I still, I still hope it's a three-way tie. 
I do too. If you all, if you see it, just kind of massage the votes. Maybe who knows? Not going to lie. I might make a bunch of fake accounts just. (laughs) And then also I have pinned to the top of my Twitter account. My cousin's daughter plays soccer for Stratford high school. And they're in like a photo competition. If you listen to this before Thursday, no, she's not a villain. But if you're listening to this before Thursday, please go vote for Houston Stratford. I put it pinned to the top of my Twitter at Alex J. Middleton (sighs) would really be a solid you could do for me. Um, but then uh, before we move on to not cool uh, or to what would Jesus do, Robert, we have some limited edition merch available in the past gravy store, but not for much longer. How long can everybody get in on the past gravy merch sale? You have until this Saturday, May 7th. Yeah, I forgot to order it last week. I got to get on that shit right To, to get your limited edition we had gravy city shirts, tanks, mugs, a glass. We have Frankie Ocho. Fucking, oh, dude. I yeah. feel like those have been selling a lot That's better than I, I thought. I thought 10 people maybe would buy those. And like The people love Frankie. People are loving Frankie, and I'm loving the people are loving Frankie. I play Xbox with our, our buddy, uh, Texas Cat Daddy, that writes in sometimes. And just, he brings up Frankie Ocho all the time. And he was playing with some girl that was in, like, New Zealand. And she was like, is that the spider? Spider again? And I was like, fucking girl, he is. Yeah, he is. Um, but yeah, uh, th- then we have the gravy tech shirts that were uh, supposed to be one time only. They're back. Um, and then you got the pint glasses for all that coffee mugs for all that. This is only going to be available till May 7th. If you don't get it, like gravy tech shirts, they're gone. Never again. The the gravy city, never again. This is your no, only opportunity to get in on it. I didn't realize that we were also selling like one of them is a jersey. Like it's jersey type material. Yep, we have a jersey there too. So why cool. don't miss out on that. that? Why wouldn't you want it? Pass the gravy merch.com. Pat, I'm gonna I'm gonna go pull it up right now so I can officially make my order. Um after that's after literally what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna fucking get the jersey too, dude. That jersey's pretty sick. Some good yeah, designs like, in there. I wasn't planning on the it. jersey, but I just I wish it was a Looking button up, it's not, it. but it's still super sick. I kind of um, want to get yeah. the phone case too, to be honest with you. Do it. Pa- yeah, we got phone cases, we got pint glasses, I mean, we got coffee I've, mugs. There's everything. Passgreymerch.com, all of this stuff. Uh, the first one, two, three, four, five rows of stuff only available in our limited edition release. It'll be done by Saturday, May 7th. We're going to post some more on our socials to, to keep reminding you guys. But if you if you order your stuff, a lot of you guys have, have tweeted us. Let us know when you get your stuff in. We want to see you guys repping past the gravy. And uh, yeah, cannot wait to get my Gravy City stuff. Uh, PastGravyMerch.com. Let's move into the What Would Jesus Do segment where you guys hit us up on Twitter using the hashtag PTGWWJD through Jesus in a modern day situation he might find himself in if he came back. And uh, we'll tell you how he would handle said situation. This is the What Would Jesus Do segment. Jesus, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Jesus, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Put him in a situation in a modern time. If you brought the stream, do you think he'd make it rhyme? So think about this crazy world in which we live today. And how would Jesus handle it in any given way? All right. Um, use the hashtag PTGWWJD to at pass the gravy pod on Twitter. We're only going to do this segment until you guys stop submitting stuff for us. Uh, this week's What Would Jesus Do comes to us from our buddy Josh Tree Coddle at Joshua Tree 713. He says, What would Jesus' baseball nickname be? He's uh, we've already established that he would be a closer, but now he needs a nickname. It took me 30 seconds, maybe the savior. Like he's getting saves, he's a closer, he's the savior. That's pretty good. I had some other, I'm trying to remember what I had said. Like, I know one of them, I said, uh, the mound Messiah. I mound like that Messiah one a lot. Good. That seems more like a starting pitcher though. I don't know. I mean, what does the Messiah do? He comes in to the save Messiah you. Messiah of the mound. The Messiah saves you. Uh, I, I did, getting saves. Darren said the carpenter. I like that a little bit, but I think that's also more of a starting pitcher name. Like he's coming in, he's carving shit Building up. Building up a perfect game, you know? I did like Mundo's Jesus nails Christ. That's pretty, Love that. Love that's pretty that. fucking good. Uh, oh, I also had the Prince of Punch Outs. That's pretty good. <laughs> the Rapture. 
Oh, that also seems like it could go bad too. You know, bad for yeah. the opponents. Bad for the batters. No, like okay, the, the rapture might be Raldus Chapman's nickname. That would be a better bit for him, I think. Um, not this season though. Not going with. Um, but yeah, I I think I like Savior. Just it seems he walks out there. He's coming out to save everybody. Get I mean, to I mean, save you. This, think about it this way though. Babe Ruth had like twelve nicknames because he was so good. I right, think I think all of, all these, of these play. They all do. Because I, lo- I love the Mount Messiah, but also when Jesus is out there just like throwing shed past people, he's the Prince of Punch Outs. And you know how like, um, at least at like Yankees home games, when they punch somebody out, you're like, <laughs> like you, you hear, they, they play that whistle. Like they just do the, any strike out, he gets his, oh. And they just put, that they, they put dope. the, you put the spotlight right on him on the mound. I was going to say night games. Yeah. You just have that one spotlight come down on dim the rest of the lights, like eight seconds. I like it. That'd be good. Also, I think Jesus, the body Christ would be really funny too. <laughs> if he was just super jacked with that would be more of like a wrestler or MMA name. <laughs> Jesus, the body Christ. <laughs> that was a good one that was I mean, I like a lot that. of answers but i think that they all addressed the situation so great great josh hashtag ptg wwjd to at past the pod on twitter pat will you tell everybody about our good friends at alamo remedy real quickly before we get into the well, yeah i mean this is actually gonna like I, I say this most weeks because after i've been sitting here flapping my gums for an hour and a half i realize that my lips are a little bit chat so this is a good reminder every time bam just hit that cbd lip balm even like I, I just have the natural, yeah, it's called natural flavor. Not really any flavor to it. Still tastes phenomenal though. It's great. You know, they got the uh, I got, you know, I gotta get some of those gummies though. I talk about them all the time, and every time I say the gummies, I like look to reach for them, and I realize I don't have them. Get a little bit depressed, to be honest with you, because I love gummy bears. I've got uh, the, what is this? The third week in a row though. I've got my. So this, I'm in a different room here. I sit out in the other room watching TV and playing video games and stuff. So I keep the uh the cucumber uh melon cream or just cucumber cream whatever the hell it's called i keep it out there to rub on my shoulders because i sit in weird positions as i'm like hunched watching baseball and like i get into it third week in a row i forgot to bring it in here and hit my shoulders in the middle of this and it pisses me off a little bit uh this is like see this is why you gotta have multiple revenues though i still get the cbd lip balm so we're good in the morning you like a little uh you you want to put it in your coffee i don't know maybe about the coffee it's tincture it doesn't have any flavor you're fine throw your tincture right in there or a couple drops underneath your tongue you know, get that hemp flower. They've got a couple different hemp flowers. Variety. Variety is the spice of life. Variety is the spice of Alamo Remedy. It really is. AlamoRemedy.com. Use our promo code PTG at checkout. Get 10% off of your order at AlamoRemedy.com. Give them a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Alamo Remedy and at Alamo Remedy CBD. Let them know you're supporting the people supporting the podcast. If you get their products, make sure you tag them and us to let them know you're supporting the people that do support us. Alamo Remedy CBD, the official sponsor of the Not Cool segment. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool, man. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. Not cool. Dude, that's not cool. Not cool. All right, uh, if you'd like to submit a not cool, something that just makes you say, hey, man, that's not cool throughout the week, hit us up on Twitter, hashtag PTG, not cool to at pass the gravy pod. We'll pick some of the, the better ones or or some of the ones that we feel like are most shareable um, each week and, and read you some of them. Let's start off this week with some listener submitted not cools. And uh, we're going to go with, oh, Texas Cat Daddy, a.k.a. Brandon Davis Ooh. at a stream of cream on Twitter and Cat Daddy says, oh, this is this is serious. And he says, my friend who I will keep anonymous had a recent stroke and things just need to get better. I do not want to get into the details, but please just send thoughts and prayers. He's a good guy. Fuck strokes. Fuck cancer. Fuck all that shit. Love you, Jay. I am. Yeah, yeah. You said it perfectly right there. Like, fuck all of those things and T's and P's, bro. P's and yep. P's. We're going to keep you in the prayers, buddy. All the positive vibes going your way, my friend. Um, yeah, that does suck. Some of, these, some of these are kind of heavy to start us off, but I feel like, you know, not cools are heavy at times. Um, our next one comes from our girl, Melissa Hyde at Mel Hyde myself. Uh, happy early Mother's Day to you. She says, 
The yeah. people that threw out a bag with eight puppies tied up in a ditch. What the fuck is wrong with people? This goes beyond not cool. People that do these things are soulless, and I hope they reap what they sow. Yeah, that's fucked up, man. I don't understand how people can like, like just like let like like. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not saying I understand just letting an animal go, you know, because then like that animal has to like fend for itself. But especially when you like tie them up into a bag and just throw them, it's like you're not even giving them a chance. You know, you're not. You're not giving them an opportunity at all. Like that's a fucking scumbag move. And it's, just, you know, you hope the worst. You hope the worst thing happens to those people. I mean, like the only thing that makes it is like your dog got pregnant. You didn't want it. Probably should go. Drop them off at a fucking fire station or something. A like, shelter, I know that's dude. Your, There's I so many like shelters really you can like, do that too. Like I, I guarantee you though, if you walked into a police station where like all oh, these puppies just got born, I don't want them. I'm not keeping them. And, like police station, fire station. If you just left the puppies there like i can't take care of these i don't want to they'll figure out something to do with it firemen will take a dog they'll keep one as a mascot for the house no instead you tie him up as a sack and throw him in a ditch because you're an evil piece of shit i hope that person dies yeah straight up i hope that person it's a dies. fucking scumbag fucking thing to do man it's at least they got fucking found. scumbag thing to do i want a fucking puppy i've been thinking about you it a lot adopted lately. one of those puppy. you should get one uh, like my sister's dog can sometimes be aggressive towards other dogs, but I, it's normally more of a full size dog. She's, she's pretty good with puppies. I want a fucking puppy. Do it. We have Wheezy have play dates with it. It'd be fun. I have a puppy to sleep with at night. Yeah. That's pretty dope. Best part. It's the best part. Um, all right. This is the, yeah. So that's a solid, like both of those are solid, not cool. So we're going to kind of go down to a, uh, a less, sad one um this is from mikey paul at it's just mikey p on twitter and he says his not cool is the irs telling us that our return will be deposited by a certain date only to get an email saying it'll be a couple more weeks now i'm sure the irs would have been super cool if you were like hey not gonna be able to pay my taxes by that date oh wait no they wouldn't be cool about that at all and they'd probably fucking just audit the shit out of you and then just fuck you over forever yeah it's bullshit like when you uh you, hey, your bill that you have to figure out what you owe is due. And then also, uh, we're going to get you your refund. Psych, we're going to get to whatever the fuck we feel like. I still haven't got mine back. Still haven't got mine back. Waiting on that. But yeah, it fucking sucks, man. Taxation oh, sweet. I got mine. Theft. I did mine literally the last day and I got mine already. I, how does it work like that? I don't understand that. Um, I'm dope. Doesn't make sense. That's, a, that's sense. how it works. Does not Why do I have to me? Well, I, I literally just looked it up because I hadn't checked. I was like, oh, I wonder if I got mine. And now I'm seeing I have a dollar and 61 cent charge to Disney Plus. What can you even buy on Disney Plus for a dollar 61? Mm-hmm. Doesn't make any sense. Make I'm not going to do anything about it, though. Well, then just monitor and see if there's more charges. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's Apple. I'm sure. I mean, not Apple. It's Disney Plus. I'm sure it's probably like Disney Plus doesn't charge anything randomly for dollars. I'm sure there's a reason for it. I drink probably. a lot, but yeah, you know, what are you going to do? I got you. I got you on that. Um, my not cool. I'll go first because uh, it's probably the worst one of the three of ours. But my not cool is that my fucking Keurig machine just wasn't working today. I was trying to make coffee and uh, you pour the water in the Keurig. Then you put the cup in the Keurig, then you put your cup down and you wait for it to start. And I hit the thing and it goes, and it like only took like the water down like a quarter of an inch. And then I hit it again. It just wouldn't do it. And I had to keep unplugging it and waiting. And then it would only take it down by like the smallest little portion. It would take a little bit of water in. So I was, I, I poured more water in to try and see if that would fix it. And eventually 15 minutes later, I hear it start making stuff. And then it's just overflowing with coffee because I poured more water in it. So it's just my Keurig being a piece of shit. That's like, you're a coffee maker, make coffee. That's all yeah, I that's... need you to do. I don't need you to, there's, I don't need you to tell me the time. I don't need you to, I don't need you to froth it. I don't need you to do anything fancy. Just fucking make the motherfucking coffee. That is what the purpose of the coffee maker is. And it's not doing it. So that is my not cool. That's actually a pretty good one. When you need coffee and you can't like, just have coffee. What the fuck is this? Yeah. Some bullshit. That sucks a lot. I'm sorry about that. Thanks. Yeah, anything else? That's your only one? That was my only one. 
Uh, I got two. Um, so last week we talked about this, how I drank 11 beers to make my beer mid. I thought that was um, impressive. No, it, it was delicious. It was great. I hadn't done that in a while. And also, I used IPAs while doing it. So, mm-hmm. like, you know how I always kind of famously talk about not really getting hangovers? Well, I did that, and then I just did my normal thing on Wednesday where then I just start drinking whiskey. Uh, yeah, it turns out if you start with 11 IPAs and then drink whiskey, you get hung over the next day. I could see that. Yeah. I could definitely I, uh, see that being a thing. It was like, I didn't have to vomit or anything like that, but, like, I had a headache, and I was just tired as shit all through my morning shift until I got home and could put some more booze in my body to, regular, like, regulate my fucking serotonin levels in my brain. But, um, yeah, if I had just done my normal, you know, three to six beers, I think it would have been fine. 11, because, like, aren't these conspiracy theories, like, 7% alcohol? It's a lot. Yeah, they're pretty fucking high. So, um, learned my lesson. I'm going to go back to not getting hangovers now, because I'm not going to do that anymore. One of the descriptions of the podcast, I believe, was, and Pat explains how he never gets hangovers. And one of your coworkers commented and was like not co-worker funny, just one of our regulars okay. yeah, well, he one likes of, to fuck with me. yeah well, somebody commented and said well that's funny because he's hung over at work today yeah well it, it wouldn't have been so bad too because like i was planning because like thursdays then i open the restaurant i'm there i'm the first one there or one of the first ones uh and uh i was like as soon as i get there i'm gonna take some ibuprofen and then i forgot until like noon so i was just sitting there for like three hours just like God, this feels like shit before it hit me like, oh, yeah, you're a fucking idiot. So I went and took like five ibuprofen. Solid. Yeah. And it helped pretty That'll fucking quickly. Right up. Yeah. Yeah. And then I ate some like biscuits and gravy to get some shit in my system. And I was OK. I was really tired that day. But then I got to watch the NFL draft when I got home. So it was all good. Perfect. It's a win win. Yeah. And then my other one, this came this morning. I texted you guys. I was like, oh, I just gave myself pretty good. Not cool. I I mowed the yard. I took all the shit that was sweating it off. I threw it in like in the laundry, got all my other stuff, started the laundry, put it in there, watch the Astros for a little bit or no, then I went and took a shower. I come back out and get ready to watch the Astros. And I realize there's probably like three minutes left in the wash. I go, I didn't put any soap in this. I did not. (laughs) I've done that. I have done that. (laughs) So then I go, fuck. So I shut off the cycle grab one of my Tide Pods, throw it in the bottom, and fucking start the system all over again. No, I did. I went with a short wash on that one. I didn't do the full yeah. wash. But I was just like, at least I realized it. At yeah. least I realized it. Like, I did that um, when I went camping a while back. I like you sit by the campfire, so you, you, your clothes smell like smoke. And I was like, oh, you will, I'll just wash this. And I remember like there's some of them that I like, I'll throw some of the shirts that I had in the dryer. And then there's ones that I just want to like, air dry and i was hanging up one of them i was like this still reeks of campfire like what the fuck and then i smelled all the other stuff i was like none of this smells better i was like i didn't put detergent didn't put yeah. detergent. that's probably why i didn't clean them it just got them wet <laughs> but uh that does suck. yeah so i just kind of fucking redid it at least but before we started nice. this i threw them in the dryer it's nice I mean, to like sometimes if you're like, I want to play Xbox today and I'm gonna I'm gonna move these clothes to dry and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. I don't want to have to do this, but you're like, now I have a I have a reason to not do this. I have to put these back on and I have to put detergent in. So it's not like there's nothing worse than like, I'm just gonna hit spin on the dryer one more time. These are dry, but they could be drier. <laughs> I mean, that's my usual go-to. That's usually what it is. Yeah. I took and then I have to throw out- clothes back in the dryer that Emma takes out because she has to dry clothes because then I'm like, well, these are wrinkly. Like I'm not going to wear the wrinkled clothes. And then you throw them back in and then you forget to take them out. And then same thing just keeps happening. And it's like, these clothes have been on the bathroom counter and the dryer 17 different times over the last two weeks. And it's at a, at a certain point, I just got to put them away. Got to put them away. Yeah. Oh, I mean like today, like in order, once that was done washing for the second time, I still, I had shit in the dryer from like four days ago. So I just had to take that out. But luckily I mean, as you can see, the shirt I'm wearing pretty fucking wrinkly, but it's because I have black T-shirts that I wear to work, just like Hanes cotton tees. I mean, that's not really going to get wrinkly. It's it is right. black. It, it is what it is. So I wear those to work, and then I've got shit that I wear around my house. I don't go out, so I don't give a fuck how wrinkly my stuff is anymore. It yeah. is just... It's a solid system. 
yeah I, I mean as i said earlier i got three hobbies jacking it drinking and playing video games it's all those things i do at home and yeah <laughs> i'm just glad you're admitting that masturbating is his hobby it is a hobby. oh i'm 100 percent with you on it it is it's a hobby it's not the most interesting hobby it's a hobby though it's not the kind of hobby you want to talk about with other people but it is a hobby nonetheless mm-hmm. robert what is your not cool this week so about a month and a half ago, I was telling you guys how I got a mattress and that it was less firm than my old mattress. Cause that mattress that I had was like really firm, kind of uncomfortable. Uh-huh. And on the new mattress, I was telling you guys, like, I'm not sure if I don't like like how soft it is because I don't like how soft it is, or was it just because I got used to the firm? So we that's did, what she like, said. We did like the whole, uh, like whatever night trials, 30 night trials, whatever. And I said, you know what? It is, it is too soft. Let's just return it. Did that. That's and what I, she kept, said. I kept, I kept my old mattress like up against my wall. So like it was still there. That was an eyesore for about a month and a half. Um, but then laid it back down. They laid, laid, okay. the, laid my old mattress back down after they picked up the new one. And like, no, this mattress sucked. It is incredibly firm. <laughs> like, I'm a side sleeper, and like the next morning, I will go with my ribs hurting, like my ribs and my shoulder hurting. I'm did like, I no. just get punched in the ribs? What happened? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's actually what happened. Sam was so mad at him for getting rid of the nice, soft new mattress. She just beat your ass in your sleep. She hates it too. I would assume. Yeah, it was probably. That's what I'm saying. Decision. Yes, she hates it. So she kicked your ass for getting rid of the new comfy one. Yeah, that so makes sense. You- that makes a lot of sense. So how did you resolve this? Or are you, have you not yet resolved this? I bought a firmer mattress of the, like the same, same okay. brand that's coming in. I don't know, like two weeks or so. Is it one of those box beds? Yeah. yeah. That's kind of tight. Why don't you just go to the most famous mattress, mattress man in all of Houston and they'll deliver it that same day. Well, we don't do free ads on this. We don't do free. Ads I, I, that's why I never said the name. I also have that's a budget. I don't, I don't think I have that kind Dude, of money. That's if the I don't, winning I don't horse really wins the Kentucky costs. Derby, you get it for free. This is perfect. Except we didn't pick any of the favorite horses. So the, <laughs> favorite, the favorite horse wins the Kentucky Derby. Not the win, if the winning horse wins the Kentucky Derby, no way. Uh, <laughs> Robert is not prepared to gamble on his sleep. That's the problem. Plus, I think that also has to be like minimum like $3,000. Yeah, said. you got to spend a lot of money. It's not the $50 chair you bought. Um, <laughs> but yeah, dude, that does suck. Like, it's been, like, like sometimes, you know, you don't know what you had until it's gone. I also and found out that, that times. I found out that that mattress, the one that my old mattress that I'm using now is 12 years old. 12 year old What's mattress. the normal age of a mattress? that you should be on. I think I think they recommend you get rid of it at like eight. I mean it's ten at least. No, like, I think eight you is, can flip it. You can flip that bad boy. Yeah, once. but 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 they they like triple in weight after or like double in weight after eight years because of all the sweat and dead skin cells that get down into them. Dude, I, I took the cover off of you it. You need to start measuring it. You need to start measuring that. Like find a way to like weigh your mattress when you get it and then like every six months just weigh it again and be like okay this is a lie this is a lie i did the work i, I mean the- I'm, I'm guessing mine is heavier than average though because there's a lot more sweat going into it I have, i'm fat yeah i took the cover off of it to wash it and then when i saw like the underneath what was underneath the cover i'm like this mattress is gross i mean you really need to get a new one i don't know if you'll be able to even see on the, the camera but like there's, it's kind of dark it's stained and it's Ooh. bro like, my mattress has scotch and marinara stains on it okay i'm not <laughs> i'm not one to judge on that okay how much do you think the average mattress weighs i just looked it up um i'm gonna say like 85 pounds i was gonna say 70 but i want to i want to say like 100 I wanted to guess like 100 to 150 pounds is the average yeah. one. Then that's so talking we were, about like, like, like 
king or queen size mattress. Well, because also, you know, you think there's boxing mattress and then there's Tempur-Pedics, which are heavy motherfuckers. It's a dense material that they right. use. Whereas, you know, just something with the springs and a frame and then some fabric on it is going to weigh like, you know, 20 pounds. Mattresses are such a weird thing, though. Like, it's just like you never really think about it until like you're an adult and you have to buy it's one. It's your life, fucking man. expensive as shit, man. It's a third of your life, though, man. It's so worth it. No, I agree, though. You do spend you spend money on a mattress. You spend money on toilet paper. I think you spend money on a computer that you use regularly. And then if you like like your phone or whatever, like life hack, buy a cheap mattress, but like just put it on top of your old mattress, extra soft. Or just keep buying like mattress toppers. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did that. Same so premise. One. But with so this one, topper. this one is down. It's a down feather one. That one gets hot as shit. <laughs> I got six layers of mattress toppers because every two years I just get a new one. What color is your um, like uh, your your mattress like gray? Is it sheets? I guess you fuck yeah yeah yeah. But like. Like, do you have, have you, do you have like a white like mattress cover or like mattress sheets? Not like sheets, the, the sheets uh, that you put the on comforter, the bed? comforter, comforter, the comforter. Oh, I think it's like it, t- it tells me you're either an insane person or that you're just super clean if you have a white comforter on your mattress. Like, it's it always it looks cool in all the TV shows and stuff where it's like, oh, I'm, this is a minimalist design, like my floors are stone and I have a white comforter on my bed i'm like that's fucking awesome mine would be so fucked up it'd be so ruined like the dog when she has mud hopping up on it, it's like oh well, these are just gonna be here forever like it would have so much shit on it and then it's like like i don't know i think it's it's a ballsy move to go with a white comforter yeah i don't my I, i've got two comforters and they're both like you can put either side one's tan and dark blue one's tan and light green so like if it's not the dark blue one it's gonna show dirty paws that because my sister's dogs they got dirty paws they'll jump up in my bed it's what it is though you know you either you accept just, that your house is going to be dirty because of dogs or you over clean you're going to just be upset you're just going to be upset for a very long time i accept it can you guys what see you the base behind me nope okay cool sometimes my neighbor just like we have a nightclub the other night she started doing it at 10 30 was like i don't give a shit whatever i'm up she has weird hours, but like then I can also be loud getting up in the morning because I have weird hours too. So it plays well. Probably works in um, a restaurant. Well, she's just I I don't think I've uh, seen her coming around. I don't think that's where she works. Okay, I think she works at a she's a, she's she works at a dance club. I was gonna say maybe she uh, has an OnlyFans and this is like ten thirty at night. That's the I time to start that. Good for her. Well, or five thirty in the afternoon too. I mean, I don't, I don't give it, it's not bothering. I can just hear it. And I was not knowing if that was getting picked up on the microphone or not. Um, Okay. Uh, So that was our not cool, solid crop of not cools. I would say, Uh, keep us updated on your bed. Robert and and RIP to your ribs, dude. T's and P's. T's and P's, man. And a few more, few more nights of that. Not looking forward to it. Just know that there's an end. The light at the end of the tunnel is, is getting closer at least. Um, all right, let's move on to the answer segment brought to you by littlemshop.com, the best air fresheners and air freshener accessories and not like air freshener accessories, just air fresheners, everything. There's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. They got custom, uh, they got custom prints they can make for you. They have custom keychains they can make for you. You can get some awesome, uh, awesome mirrors. They have the best air fresheners. We already told you about that. The, the best smelling air fresheners in the entire world. Um, all kinds of awesome stickers and whatnot. Just go check it out for yourself. Uh, little M shop.com, little E M shop. Dot com. You get $10 or more you spend. You're going to get free shipping on your order. They have all kinds of awesome stuff. I got this, this awesome uh, Gravy King keychain that I, uh, I I keep on my desk here. I would I would put it everywhere else, but I always need to show it for the, the advertising. Maybe I need to get a second one. I mean, you need to get a second one. Um, but yeah, littlemshop.com at littleemshop.com. 
tweets on Twitter and at little EM shop on Instagram. Give them a follow. Let them know you heard about them on past gravy. If you're getting anything from little M shop.com, make sure that you, uh, you tag us, tag them and let them know you're supporting the people supporting the podcast, little M shop.com, the best air fresheners in the entire world and the official sponsor of our answers segment. Any questions? Remember when we used to not have the David S. Pumpkin part at the end and I would have to manually play it and I would always forget to do that? Yeah. That was a fun six months. <laughs> I was like, hey, what if we just put that at the end of the clip? <laughs> I love that uh, it took you that long to just come to that conclusion, too. Yeah, it was like it took 15 seconds to do. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions you'd like us to answer for you, you want relationship advice, huh? We got you. Uh, you got a high thought, something you thought of while drunk, something you just saw on the internet you'd like our opinion on. Hit us up at Passy Pod. Use the hashtag PTG Answers. You can email them to us, but we do check Twitter way, way more. So it's very likely that you will get your tweets read before um, at or we're at Pass the Pod on Twitter. Hashtag PTG Answers, and then you can email them to us. Answers at Pass the Pod dot com. Uh, let's start with our podcast son, Skyler Lester. Lester, oh my God, it's Skyler! At OMG, it's Skyler uh, on Twitter. Skyler says, "Why do we say?" A bug hit our windshield, and we're the ones driving uncontrollably at 70 miles an hour. Because everybody has main character syndrome, and it's I'm all about gonna, us. I'm not going to take responsibility for my actions. I'm going to be honest with you on that. Also, because what the fuck is the bug doing hanging out on a damn freeway? He's trying to it's their fault. cross, and we hit it. Yeah, jaywalking is what it is. This is dangerous. Yeah, just fly to society. higher. Fly higher than the traffic. You have wings. They made the active decision to fly low enough in traffic. They hit, they hit our car. That would be a really funny, like, cause to take up. Like, you just put signs, like, on, like, country roads where it's like, all right, fly above here, birds and bugs. Fly above here. Trucks don't go. Like, this is the tallest truck that comes by here. And then you're just like, this is where you should fly. And, like, it's like they can't read. They're not going to fucking... I'm not gonna fucking know, but like you're like, no, we're aware, we're making these bugs, these creatures aware that it is dangerous to walk or fly across the street. And then if you hit a bug, you shouldn't have been bugs. there. Fuck bugs, that's why. Fuck bugs. I mean, some bugs are necessary. Yeah, but like you're dirtying up my windshield, bitch. Get out of here. But you're also hitting it. Like, yeah, you hit the bug. The bug didn't, like, come at you. Technically, we're hitting each other. You think the bug was just floating stationary right there? No, Chase, sorry. We'll never know. We'll never know. It was either flying in front of my car to, like, technically, that's we both hit each other, or it flew at me. And it's the same thing. You know, But that's not my fault. Remember that Flappy Bird game where it was, like, you just have to avoid the like pipes and you're flying above it and below it. It's like, just flappy bird up, dude. You saw the, you saw the fucking car coming. Just go up or low enough Stupid. to where you feel like I'm going to go over. Yeah. You know? Fucking bugs. Um, yeah. Uh, my real answer to that is that I am not going to take responsibility for that. So it's the bug doing that to me, not me doing that to the bug. And I think that's the way most people play. I think it was main character syndrome. That's mm-hmm. what you <laughs> mean. I like it's it. all about us. Use that more. Yeah, it's all about us, guys. That's it. It's the all long right. and the short um, of it. That was a great question, though, and a good observation as well. Um, okay, Texas Cat Daddy. He's been weighing in a lot on today's podcast. Texas Cat Daddy, a.k.a. Brandon Davis, a.k.a. A Stream or at A Stream of Cream on Twitter. Uh, he says, dig deep for this one. Would you rather have $30 million or 30 million loyal friends? $30 million and it's not even fucking close. And I don't even get me started with the people that were like, if you had 30 million loyal friends, they would all give you $5. No problem. And then you have five times. Like, Do you understand how exhausting having 30 friends sounds to me? Or 30 loyal friends that like you got to see and talk to all the fucking time. Are you kidding me? I've got like six friends, like real friends. You know, I'll probably, I'll bump that number to 10. 
Yeah, yeah. And even that, it's like, just, and I, and here's the thing: these are my close friends that I barely see. I just keep up in the group chat with them, and like once or twice a year, we have a lake weekend where we all get fucked up together. Thirty I, uh, million friends. I think thirty million is a good point. Uh, like where you were, like everybody in the the replies was like, "Well, if you had one dollar from each friend, then you have the thirty million dollars, and you have thirty million loyal friends." And I was like, "Yeah, but do you want to be the guy?" It's like Pat got rich because we all gave him money. Like you know, they're talking like, about that behind your back. You're like, really? Like, okay, what the fuck, dude? Like Pat just took all of our money. Then he's like, "Oh, look at me, I'm rich." I did just think of one thing though. 30 million loyal friends would also like listen to our podcast. Yeah. Help us spread the word. And then, yeah. And we'd be massively successful that way. We wouldn't have to work our jobs. Fuck. I think I'm going 30 million loyal friends now. All week long, I've thought about this and it literally just. The $30 million dollars is the easiest one to go. But then with. we have to, but we have to spend like right that money to- and like we still have to build this here. 30 million loyal friends have all of a sudden our thing just started doing 30 million listens a week. And then so 30 more million people would find out about it, and then it was 30 spread million from loyal. There. Anything is awesome. Cause like, dude, my apartment complex, when they're fucked with me, 30 million negative reviews kind of shows up. <laughs> you know? I'm, like I'm, I'm, it's little things like that. Like you could, like, I could win. If I had 30 million votes, would that have won me an election? Maybe. I could run for president to be in all the power. So so Joe Rogan, biggest podcast on the planet. 11 million people an episode. Okay, I want 30 million loyal friends then. Yep, I'll take the 30 million loyal, million loyal friends, friends dude. I completely turned. Dude, bro, we would, we're, we're we doing be like three times triple, his Yeah, we could triple Joe Rogan. So then think about it this way also. His contract was what, 10 years, 100 million? Yeah. That's 10 years, 300 million. Boys, we're all getting 100 million dollars. Right? And we don't have to work. Even for Robert, I think putting up well, with this, us full no, time. This would is be our work. Is what I think you, no, this would I'm be saying, the work. But I'm saying we don't have to, like, we just, we get to do what we want now. Even for Robert to have to put up with us full time, I think $100 million makes it worth yeah, it. Yeah, you would definitely put up with us for $100 million, right? Oh, yeah. Robert would be like, yeah, we could have right. seven hour podcasts. I don't care. Well, well yeah. $100 million? Come on. What, no, but here's the thing, though. Then we would do it three times a week. Yeah, I was going to say, if, what we would do is if, like, Pastor Gay became, like, our, our number one, like, job, uh, like, that would be, we would just do multiple episodes a week. We would be like, all right, Not Cool is in this one. Answers is in this one. Like, we would chop what it would up Jesus to where it's probably, like, hour and a half episodes multiple times a week. The, the beauty of Pastor Gay now is, like, we just do it all at once so you can listen to it for multiple days. I'm Holy very happy shit, the job I that I have, but it would be really cool if Pastor Gravy was like my, like the the mode, you know. And here's like, the thing. But then also, if you're bigger than Rogan, like that's fucking sick too. So yeah, 30 million loyal friends, absolutely. And the more I think about it, they're loyal friends. I don't have to be a good friend to them. They're loyal, so I don't have to yeah. keep up with them. But dude, and they're dogs, bro. Like they're like they'll do whatever. Like like I was just saying, like you could I could fucking torch this apartment complex online in the reviews. Like, bro, I just like, it's oh, the gravy hey, gang. It's like a negative. They have negative stars. I didn't know that was possible. Yeah, you had thirty million reviews come in. One star in this bitch. I mean, as a troll, like it would be so much fun to just troll with thirty million people that are at your access. For like, I mean, it sounded exhausting to me all week long. I've obviously thought immediately I'll take thirty million, but now I'm just thinking like. 30 million lo- like, initially bro, be the, 30 million dollars we're, we're gonna be the biggest thing on the, in the world we're gonna be the biggest million. podcast in the world and you can do anything now now if you don't have a business that you're trying if you just want to fuck off with 30 million that's the easy like more power to you if i didn't have this going on 100 percent, i'd take the 30 million no and, like, i don't think so because it's like anything you do you could start no, no. your own restaurant and like 30 million people would be that. regularly I there i wouldn't want to do that i wouldn't want to do that if I had $30 million, you know what I would if you do? you had a restaurant with 30 million people always trying to get on the guest list, always trying to fucking make reservations, you're Don't never going to have to worry about that. There's there's a lot of stress that goes around it. If I didn't have this podcast. But you would have the money because you would have such a fucking successful restaurant that no. you would have to, you would be the delegator. You wouldn't have to even fucking do this. 
No, if I had $30 million and I didn't have this podcast, I would do nothing for the rest of my life. I would make some like just stable investments with some of it and I would live off. Fuck, my kids might not have anything by the time I die. Fuck them. They grew up with a father who had $30 million. I'm sure they got a good education. They can figure out their own finances. I'm doing <laughs> nothing for the rest of my fucking life. Would you follow the peckers around? It's a good one. Oh, I thought you said peckers. Oh, I was peckers. like peckers. He would do both. Yes to both. It would be his answer. Oh, I'm yeah, I'm sure I would go to a lot of Packers games. But honestly, what and I would bird do, watch a lot, lots of woodpeckers I, this time. I, I, all of, most of my expenses would happen very quickly. I'd probably buy my child at home. I'd buy a big ass truck that's very comfortable, and even then, still might not do that. Might buy a sensible car, uh, some sort of SUV, maybe a Jeep, some comfortable but big enough that my fat ass has room. And then I would buy a uh, house. Fuck, I might even do a double wide out in Fredericksburg, just so I had a spot up there. So I could be in the hill country or back in Houston. It's really the only two places I want to go. I'd fly into Boston a couple times a year, catch some games for the Sox. I mean, I would live a very chill life. I would buy alligators and build a moat around a house that I owned. Just to say I had a, a moat. No, with, no, with no, no, nah, man. I get drunk. I would definitely get eaten by one of those gators. Hire security guys and have them wear alligator costumes. That works too. Or just like a hat that's like the bill is an alligator mouth. Too. Robert, you would go, would you go to the 30 million friends or $30 million? I was with Pat where I was thinking $30 million like this whole time. But as you guys were talking about, I'm like, yeah, that 30 million loyal friends, you know, makes sense. Loyal means like ride or die. Because you're going so, yeah. to make a lot more money on your podcast with, uh, <laughs> you're going to make a lot more money off it and you still just get to sit around and do your podcast. And that's just 30 million loyal friends that could then also promote for you. And here's the thing. It turns into way more. Mm-hmm. Even if I say some dump, not something that would be really cancelable, but like, you know, if somebody you tried cancel to cancel back me, somebody, you could cancel you somebody to try to cancel, cancel me, you back and cancel out the cancel. Million people that are loyal to me. I ain't getting canceled. Pat's, look, look, Pat's not that guy. Pat's not that guy. It's not Pat. Pat's not that guy. You'd have 30 yeah. million people doing that. You're like, well, he must not be that guy. Oh, the New York Times wants to write an article about me. Guess who's going out of business? The New York Times. Not me. Guys, let's all put our money together and buy the New York Times. Yeah, so 30 million loyal friends, I think, is our is our I can't consensus. believe yeah. I found a reason to flip that. Really but... turned us, really turned us around on that one. <sighs> Love it. All right. Um, Alex O at Alex McThunder one on Twitter says, if you could make any two people fight in a no rules cage match, who would you choose? <sighs> You know, the funny thing is I said this to one of my coworkers and he immediately pointed at two of the servers. Yeah. (laughs) He was like, I fake, I I hate her and I hate her. (laughs) I was like, God damn, that was quick. Uh, I mean, I was thinking like, see, you always, here's the thing. Everyone always tries to think of two people they hate. They would like to see hurt each other. But what if it was just like Nancy Grace and The Rock? You just knew that The Rock was going to, like, beat the shit out of her. Yeah. Um, that was kind of what I was on the lines of. But I also would like to see Will Smith and Chris Rock right now, just because that would be funny. But the Will, Smith, w- Will Smith would kick the shit out of him. He's a big guy and has trained a lot for fighting in his movies. Chris, no, uh, not, Chris, Chris Rock, Chris Rock would also get to do steroids. Doesn't matter. Will Smith has 20 years of training. No, Chris Rock has 20 though. years of comedy. Okay, fine. You, okay, here's the thing. You think Will Smith has never done steroids? All these actors that get absolutely shredded for films, you think they do it naturally? Maybe. Not a fucking chance, buddy. Maybe. Not a fucking chance. There's a lot of human gro- growth hormone that's gone through fucking Hollywood. And none of it has been doctor prescribed. I would want to watch, and it wouldn't be people, it would be dinosaurs, but I would want to watch two T-Rexes just fucking fighting or just like a fight that would be really like, be just good fight. to watch That's absolutely what i would pick what if we did like tom wilson and brad marchand that's only a, uh, only a couple of people know who we're talking about but those are those are hockey players that would be fun that'd be a fun fight like it doesn't have to be oh i just want to see these people get hurt it could be fun it would be a fun fight to watch 
Okay, no, I know what it is. I know what it is. I know what it is. Tyson Fury and Kim Jong Un. <laughs> oh, I mean, I think Tyson just, Fury and Vlad. Oh, I absolutely Putin know he would win. More. It would just be a fucking beatdown. But I mean, I think right. it'd be more fun for it to be Vladimir Putin if you're going with a worldwide dickhead. I'd be worried that Putin would have some outside interference. No, no, this is in this scenario. It's just these two are fighting. Okay. I'd still go Kim Jong Un. I think I'd still go Kim Jong Un, just because it's like, could he actually punch him into the air? What I if we did be. like Prime Tyson and Tyson Fury? Because they're both heavyweights, Tyson right? Tyson, yeah. I mean, like, if anybody's got enough power and enough, dude, that's what goodness. it would be. That's what it would be. But it's like a cage match, okay, whatever. But like, I don't know. I still think Tyson Fury beats Mike Tyson. I know Mike Tyson is the most he's dangerous man so on earth, big. but like, he's just like you. It gets like you're fighting a fucking train. You're fighting a fucking train, right? He's what six seven, and Mike Tyson's what five ten. I don't think Mike Tyson's an extraordinarily tall guy. I mean, I mean, obvi- the obvious boxing one is Tyson in the league. He's five ten, yeah. Yeah, so like, I mean, you almost have to still go with Tyson Fury there because he's got an eight inch height six, advantage nine. or ten yeah. nine inch height advantage on him. I would want to watch that. Prime Fury, Prime oh, shit. Tyson. He's got an eleven inch height advantage on him. Holy fuck! He's... Prime Fury, Prime Tyson, or Prime, Prime Mike Tyson, Prime Tyson Fury. That's what I want to watch just because it's in my brain right now. That would be fun to watch. I mean, Tyson and Lee would be great too, though. Right, but like, I just want to see. Like, I think Mike Tyson at one point was like, like there was no one that he couldn't beat. I don't know if he could beat Tyson Fury just because he's such a fucking massive, giant human being. You know, when you're when you're a foot shorter, and yeah, he's so good at getting inside and then just unloading. Like, he would fuck up his body. He's so much faster than Tyson, but Tyson. He's a good technical bot. I keep saying Tyson and Tyson. <laughs> Tyson and Tyson, yeah. Tyson Fury is such a it good technical both. boxer, too. And he could use that jab and not let him get on the inside. I would think he would outpoint him. I don't know if a if a knockout's gonna happen. That's see, that's such an unfair fight, though. Now, now that's if it I was wanna, like I want to see an unfair fight, it could be anybody. That's the beauty. If it was De- if it was Deontay Wilder and Mike Tyson, I would like to see that one. Deontay Wilder is still way bigger than him. But he also just likes to throw absolute bombs, as does Tyson. So I think no matter what, we're going to knock out that one. Tyson Fury, he might just stick on the outside and I still want to watch and outpoint him. All of these ones I want to watch. Um, Robert, what about you? Um, maybe like Nancy Grace and a Velociraptor. Maybe like uh, Mike Fires and the entire 2017 Astros team. Oh, we just over okay. Tyson Fury and Mike Fire. So that's what I want. It's gotta watch. be two people. It's gotta be two people though. Cause that would be really funny. It was just like okay. Entire you know what? Basis. You know what? Tyson Fury and Carlos Correa. Or not Tyson Fury. God damn it. Mike Fires and Carlos Correa. Yeah. Or the only Carlos thing Correa. that makes you worry is Mike Fires has the fire tattoo, so it's like his punches are probably <laughs> or or Carlos Correa and Cody Bellinger. So when he told Cody Bellinger to shut the fuck up, because you don't well, know Bellinger what the fuck you're talking that, about. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then all of a sudden Bellinger shut the fuck up because you know someone on his team was like, but they can use bats. Hey. <laughs> well, it's cool. Cody Bellinger wouldn't be able to hit him anyway. He can't hit anything anymore. That's true. Hey yo. Hey yo. I like that question. That was a great question. Very good. Uh, shout out to Alex O on that one. Um, all right, Danielle Weston at Danny underscore Weston. Her question this week to us is, what is Irish cream besides what Pat should call his man batter? Yeah. Also, I got kind of gross when I saw man batter. I was like, that's gross. Don't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> that one got me. I was like, ew. <laughs> but what the fuck is Irish cream? Um, like, is it, why is it different than other creams? Uh, because they flavor it with shamrocks. It's it's just it's a, it's a cream liqueur. That's really all it is. That's it, it's just liquor and cream is what that's what it is. That's why it's Irish. Because if there's one thing us Irish are known for, it's being irresponsible drunks. Well, just drunks. Jessica Gavin, Jessica Gavin, who is the first answer that I found when I said, 
Irish cream difference on Google. It says, what makes Irish cream different? According to Jessica Gavin on Google, she says, Irish cream liqueur is made with heavy cream whiskey and mixed with flavors like cocoa and vanilla to add depth and complement the aged alcohol. Coffee is a popular add-in. You didn't fucking explain what's different. It's a low alcohol product. Well, it's a, a lot of time it's based on Irish whiskeys. That's the flavor profile that they're going for. That's what it is. Jesse yeah. Gavin, you don't know shit. Shut up. You should start blogging about Irish cream, Pat. The Irish cream blog. The Irish cream cast. Would you talk an Irish cream, fellas? I'll call the followers the cream pies. Mm-hmm. That's great. <laughs> it makes sense. It's perfect. Um, yeah, so the difference is it is just basically cream for Irish liqueurs. I mean, they add like cocoa and vanilla and shit like that too. But yeah, it's. But you know, you never hear like Colombian cream. So oh, you hear Col- Colombian bam bam. Colombian bam bam, <laughs> which is always funny to hear. Colombian necktie. Yeah, you don't like those. The Irish are known for some things. Colombians are known for some things. You know. Goodbyes and creams are the Irish. <laughs> bam Bam and neckties. That's what Colombia's got. <laughs> I love that. Um, oh, I, I don't know why this came to me just then, but I saw an ad. I was watching. I had bet on the Mets today. So I was watching the, the Mets and Braves game before we started the podcast. And they had an ad. And it was Visit Canada, like Summers in Canada. It was like, you always nope. talk about how nice we are. And uh, we, want to, we want to tell you guys in the most, the, the nicest ways possible. You're getting very take Irish. A, I know. It was in the, in the nicest ways possible, we'd like to tell you guys to take a hike. Still get lost. Irish. And it was like, they were like, take a hike. And it was showing all the hiking in Canada. Get lost in like wherever the fuck they were or whatever. And it was all these like, like, take a break or break it off, whatever it was. And it was like, okay, Canada, like even trying to like, like you trying to suck Canada in any way is not making me want to go to Canada. We're it's very nice all the time. Mo- <laughs> Three months a year. It's a beautiful country. See that one Irish too. Like what the fuck? Fuck you, Canada. Well, yeah. Have an easy accent. You dickheads. <laughs> uh, I just thought about like to a couple months ago, it would have been like, you want to, you should come visit Canada, but you can't. You're not allowed. <laughs> It's like, it's like Cartman Land. <laughs> Canada is so me. nice, but you can't come. Why did you buy an ad just saying that? I don't know. I just wanted to. <laughs> you wish you can come to Canada, but you can't. Yeah. Um, all right. Last question we got. Our boy Riley Owens writes in on email. Uh, I love that we've heard we we get we got Riley a while back, and then I feel like uh, Riley's really been writing in a lot. So if you would like to be the next Riley. All you got to do is hit us up at Pass Gary Pod on Twitter. Uh, Riley Owen says, would a magic carpet make a better boomerang or ladle? Definitely ladle. That is a giant, like, you can scoop stuff with it. Have you ever I thrown a carpet? It's a magic They're carpet, heavy. Pat. It would come back no matter what. Like, it's magic. I don't think it would appreciate think being thrown. I don't think I it would think, appreciate being thrown. I think you're... Like, did you think Matt didn't Aladdin take Jasmine from the same place, went around the whole wide world, and then was came it, back? Was it, yeah, but he didn't throw the carpet. That's a boomerang. Which, we've established a boomerang has Magic to be thrown. through it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think a ladle. I think, yeah, you could make it into a ladle shape, but, like, it's going to leak. It's going to leak through the, the carpet. No, it's magic. It's got Scotch Guard. I think it's a magic carpet, dude. It flies. It's a boomerang. Did you watch Aladdin? I did a long time ago. Okay, like, so you know that the magic minute. carpet was temperamental. I don't think it would appreciate being thrown. But it left and it would return to the same place. But it wasn't thrown. It has to be thrown. And it was by the thrown way, by magic, Pat. If you, it you was a carpet. Ask, Carpets don't ask, fly. It flew because of magic. Be like, hey, can you scoop this up for me? And you'd be like, yeah, dude, I'm a bro. Scoop. That's a ladle. Magic carpet was absolutely a better boomerang than ladle. It was good for both. Ladle. Now here, now here's where the democracy boomerang. wins. Yeah, two of us say ladle, yep, you say boomerang because you're stupid. 
you're wrong. You all are both wrong. And I'm, I don't have a problem telling you when you're wrong. Okay, guys. So I love you guys both, but I don't have a problem telling you that you are wrong. It makes no sense that the flying thing wouldn't, it's like, that's what boomerangs do, bro. Everything's a ladle. Boomerangs bro. do. I like how you've abandoned your original premise of everything being a ladle just to spite me on this boomerang thing. No, I think everything is a ladle, but it's like, it's it a better ladle or a better boomerang? I think stuff leaks through the ladle. carpet. I think it, the boomerang, it comes back. It flies. You think, you think a magic carpet can't hold some liquid? Not as well as it can come back to where it left. I mean, we talked about last week at holding cum. Yeah, we did. did. Cum, you think you the cum was leaking one. through? Probably stained it. But that's or like I said, it doesn't get stained because it's got Scotch Guard, making it a great label. Yeah, you really missed out on that conversation, Robert. Really <laughs> it did. seems like yeah, I really it was, missed out. It was a great one. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna have to d- agree to disagree on this. One. No, 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 no. We, we agree. agree. It's a two-thirds of a, it's well, a two-thirds I'm majority. To that's disagree the with you guys. I'm well, you're wrong. To disagree with you guys. Um, you're a dissenter. Right, Riley, solid question. Way to break up the podcast that way. But um, okay, uh, at Pass Great Pod, hit us up on Twitter, guys. Give us a five-star review on itunes spotify iHeartRadio, wherever you're listening to podcasts share us with a friend it means the world to us guys if, if we can get the 30 million loyal friends that are you guys think of what else we can do we can take over the world guys do you want to take over the world gravy gang you're in all this with us all right you can take over the world with us when we take over gravy the world, gang we all going global world, because it's our world at that point you know um share us with a friend that it really means a bunch uh pass the gravy merch.com you have until saturday may 7th Saturday, May 7th, that is when it's cut off, correct? Yes, 11 p.m. So May 6th is really... No, so, no, Saturday, Saturday, May 7th at 11 p.m. Oh, okay, okay. So Saturday, May 7th, 11 p.m. Central Time. Uh, mm-hmm. You got to make sure you get your orders in. Gravy City, we got jerseys, we got shirts, we got tanks, we got Frankie Ocho shirts and tanks, we got pint glasses for all the stuff, we got coffee mugs. Go get that while you can. Saturday, May 7th at... 11 p.m. Central Time. You guys will not be able to get this stuff ever again, so go get it while you can. Let us know when you place your orders as well. You guys are awesome. I am at Alex J. Middleton. Pat's at not Pat Dan. Robert is at Robert Barbosa 3 Have a great rest of your week, guys and gals. Happy Mother's Day. Love you, Mom. And until we talk to you guys next week, pass the gravy. Yeah. Bitches! Apple bottom jeans. Boots with the fur, the club was looking at her, fuck. <laughs>